Nobody say anything. Okay. Okay. Silence. I was looking up the number. <laughs> 35. It's 36. 36. 36. 36. Yeah. Sorry. Don't hurt me. Uh, we don't hurt me, Keith. Uh, about this bird. We had two conversations about this, and yeah, I still you... got it wrong. Yep. I got it right in the first conversation. Then the second conversation was how I got it wrong. And then we're the going to get a whole year of podcast soon, guys. It's going to happen. That's disgusting. Welcome to the Save the Universe podcast number 36. Five. Wow. Go on. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna just gonna let you have this one. It's no, just, I don't want to. Come it. on. I'm I'm throwing a firebomb into your conversation. No. I'm not supposed. To, I'm not picking up the trash or dumping now. it on the floor. You made this mess. It's your problem <laughs> now. You, uh, those are my dad's cards. A 52 card pickup. You can't just leave them on the floor like that. He's gonna see him and get mad. Uh, anyone, so did you guys? Just took anyway, so uh, many weird turns, and I don't know where we are anymore. <laughs> I'm what did we control. play, Wander? Did you guys see me play any of Dauntless last night or no? Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it on September 1st. It's, I guess we'll uh, open with that. It's good. I I don't know. I I was playing it and I want to play more. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it's kind of one of those where the experience is extremely hampered by the fact that I can't play with you guys. I actually <laughs> so bought it. Lonely and, it said, and alone. Well, it <laughs> said I'd be getting another Founders it, Pack it, that no, I could give it, to a friend. There, I looked at it. It definitely says that it gives you a secondary key for a Slayer. Well... Apparently, Aww. they misworded it in the original email they'd sent out, so... Um, I was bamboozled, but I also, like, don't mind too much, but so I was just offended, because I, I, I was actually ex uh, excited. It's like, yeah, I'll actually have a friend for this, uh, going into last night, and then you're like, no. oh, I've got the Slayer's pack. And like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Well, so, uh, I, I guess the question guess becomes, Wander, which one of us were you gonna pick? Uh, I actually sent one to Keith, um... Okay then. <laughs> wow. I play oh, co-op shit with you constantly. Fine. I've tried to play Monster <laughs> Hunter with with Keith in the past. Uh, we we, we got as far with... as like both launching Monster Hunter on the Wii U or something at some point, and then never going <laughs> for some reason didn't go any further. I think it, I think we were on issues? I think we were on Teamspeak together when we were trying to figure out how to multiplayer in the game. Yeah, it had some uh. weird dumb shit to do with cats and. Maybe not doing the tutorial. Whatever I think it just it was, had a it, bunch of really irritating, like, mandatory, do all these things before you can play the real game stuff. So we just never got yeah. past it. Yeah, and that, that sucked, years ago. and we just gave up on it. And it's also one of those where, Bird, I specifically try and avoid bringing you onto games that might, invoid, uh, might involve in void, involve grinding, because your, uh, your stance on grind in any game is usually straight-up negative. So I was like, okay, let's... I uh, mean, he, he basically can't. With the yeah. schedule, <laughs> like he basically just no. just actually can't. Yeah, yeah, that's really it's a self preservation mechanism. More yeah, than the grinding else. will just be the playthrough. You'll just be a playthrough <laughs> of the grind process because that's all because he has to record. It, isn't Dauntless just you get a mission, you fight a creature, you keep fighting a creature, it runs away, you fight the creature I more, mean, you kill it, then it's you receive boss resources fight from the it. Game. The entire point of it is not a story or anything like that. It's just. Here's a large story, laundry list no. of really cool monsters that you can fight, and here's all the cool shit that you can make with their bones. Go. And that's it. And oh, I've always found it kind all of compelling. All the cool shit you can make with their bones. It's true. Hey, uh, think about like, it if you this ever way, look at any like the... Monster Hunter game, you're just wearing their bones and or their skin. <laughs> that's like the shells. distillation of your favorite parts of any MMO, though, right? Like, yeah, you don't have to deal much. with dungeons, you don't have to deal with bullshit. I mean, they're still grinding, but it's like, here's the cool fight, have fun with it. Yeah, like, before the podcast, I was I was trying to describe what Dauntless was to Bird, and my explanation was, it's like the Dark Eater Meteor fight, except for that's the entire game, and it's not that hard straight off the bat. Hmm. And that's the thing I'm waiting to see, is whether or not this formula has fights that are interesting. I think they are. That, I never uh, know. I never know what to look up. But every time I look up a video of Monster Hunter, it looks like a guy's just wailing endlessly on a thing that barely responds to it. <laughs> yeah, because it's just Jack a giant, Hunter. just like a giant, just just fucking meat sock, just being beaten on by seven Ew. people or something. And it's just yeah, so, and a meter's going down, and it's just like oh, this isn't this is not I, the Dark Souls I, connection I'm looking for I, necessarily. I think it kind of varies because, like, um, I know in the Monster Hunter games very specifically they do react. If you hit them in the face with a, a heavy weapon, they will, like, they can roll away from you and stuff like that. 
I don't think Dauntless is there yet, um, but maybe that's just because I, I'm hitting them with the small fast weapons, so I can never, like, I don't have enough punch to actually make that happen. Um, mm-hmm. But what you do have is, like, the ability to chop off certain things, and mm. uh, the I, I monsters know, It was aren't... definitely the first fight, but I was definitely watching you, like, just just button mash whale on the flank of an enemy that would, like, very occasionally, once every five seconds, swing its tail a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's that was the Nasher, which is most definitely like the least interesting of the fights. The the owl is effectively a study in how to dodge, and part of my frustration with the game is, you know, it kind of implies that you should be playing it multiplayer. So I have been, and whenever I like queue up with pugs, I'm the one like more or less pristine health wise, and they're all the ones dying, and it's just like, <laughs> please stop doing that. The more you die, the less likely are we are to win. And, like, it's just the constant, like, uh, it, it's the MMO mentality where you're like, I'm just going to run at a thing and I'm just going to hit it until it's dead. And then if I go down, somebody can pick me up. Except for you only get 10 deaths mm. on a fight before you lose permanently. And so, like, I, I was playing with people and they would just take hits that, like, I'm just dancing out of the way of. And I'm like, no. Yeah, um, because you're playing with random strangers, you can't even talk to them about what they're doing wrong necessarily unless you really want to yeah. tutor random people you never see again. Yeah. You just got to live with them. Just, yeah. I, I never play cooperative games with randoms. It's a miserable, miserable experience. Yeah. If I play it again tonight, I'm probably just going to try and. Uh, I'm just going to try and go it solo. I was just afraid of solo because some of those monsters are like beefy and some of their hits are like really hard to avoid because sometimes they'll like clip you with a hand and then hit combo you with like two more hits and then you're down. And you're like, uh, I don't know if I can do that solo. Um, I remember playing TF2 a, a long time ago, and uh, there was this one mission I played through where uh, there was this one guy in the voice chat who wouldn't let anybody else in the team talk if they had a microphone. Like, if you started saying something, he'd be like, shut up! And then um, <laughs> he directed, he directed like a 24-person team like to like the one-man level, or like the two-man level, and just told him exactly what to do. And we crushed the other side. This was like an um, astounding level of leadership that I've never seen before. And all I remember is that he was talking constantly and he demanded that if anybody else say anything ever, they immediately mute their microphone. (laughs) (laughs) So being able to direct randos and people that you never see again um, takes a a lot of aggression (laughs) it requires a certain skill set requires a lot of aggression (laughs) it worked i played tf2 on my frat like a couple of times and we had one guy that was very serious about that so everybody's response after that was to find the uh russian national anthem and play it through our (laughs) mics at him it was yeah it was a cacophony and he was not okay with it it was great yeah that's pretty funny of all the mm-hmm. anthems, you go with the one that has the connection to Sean Connery. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, main issues with it are the UI is, like, atrocious. And how is it connected to Sean Connery? Uh, Hunt for the Red October. Oh, Hunt for Red October. For me, it just boils down to the, to the usual movies. question of just how... How much is the is the free to play nature going to break it? It's yeah. cosmetic, from yeah, what we'll, I've seen and heard. We'll For see. Now. We'll yeah. see. Just the last yeah. two free to play games we played were just a nightmare. Yeah, just Fortnite no, and Orcs Must Die Not Change is like we. This is a system mm-hmm. designed by people who hate fun. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, so we'll you s- could you could uh, you probably have a Slayer key, right, Keith? Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna play Dauntless, you can you can pay seventy dollars <laughs> right now and uh, play it. I think it's forty dollars for me for the upgrade. I looked into it; it was seventy dollars. Well, no, it's seventy if you want to buy it uh, straight out. If you already oh, have, I had it. The... Yeah, then it's only see. there's an upgrade page. You might have missed it. I went to the upgrade page and it told me seventy, but I might have been yeah. I the founder page it. says ninety nine ninety nine crossed out forty. Yep. Oh. And the hero is nine the hero is seventy, but that doesn't give you access to uh Oh, that might have been what I read. That's then. the thing that's the middle tier that doesn't give you access to the alpha. And that's a thirty dollar mm-hmm. upgrade. 
I don't know why one's 30 and one's 40, considering that the price difference between the two of them is $30. But if for some mm-hmm. reason, upgrading from one to the other is only $10. Mm-hmm. Weird. There was I'll, a sale wait. earlier. I don't know. No, I, I guess it just isn't yeah. sale because, yeah, like upgrading the hero is 70, but you, the Slayer mm-hmm. one I have access to is 40. And upgrading, if you upgrade from uh, Slayer to hero, you only, it only costs 30, which is the which is the actual difference between the two. But uh-huh. only $10 more gives you founder, but which is supposed to cost 100. It's like, I, it sounds like a pretend i think they're trying to frame it like a wow what a deal you'd be crazy not to do it but really they're just doing like manipulative pricing to make it look like it's a sale when it's really just like that's probably just the real price like Mm -hmm. oh this this is down it's 10 percent of its like market price of five thousand dollars it's only 500 (laughs) or when you go into a kohl's and every every time you go to a kohl's every product in the entire store is always on sale yeah yeah so it's just lying to you it's so weird Mm -hmm. it's just a lie it's so weird when you find a product at Kohl's that isn't on sale and it's like ridiculously expensive. Like, what did like, this one do wrong? <laughs> yeah. Hey, but if if you find some gems on the eighty percent off rack, I mean, getting a shirt for three bucks, a pair of pants for five—that's awesome. This podcast brought to you by Kohl's. Kohl's—they <laughs> lie to you via pricing. <laughs> Which makes you me wonder oh, yeah, if that's what they're. If they have to mark it up by at least 50%, does that mean that to create a shirt, it's really only like $2? Uh, yeah. Sense. Chinese manufacturing. Yeah, I yeah. know. So if a shirt's like $2, the 80% off rack, they have it at $4. And if normally when it's on the shelf or the rack, it's at $10. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't bought clothes for myself in like three years. I just did I for the first time. Ever. Then what are you wearing? Since moving? Hmm. Huh. I just, Bird yeah, just I... lives off of a supply of free shirts given to him by various tech companies and talks. <laughs> <laughs> that was me in college. It worked great. A considerable yeah, amount of my wardrobe I, uh... has been banned shirts and gift shirts. Right now, yeah, I'm wearing mo- I, most of my t-shirts are ba- are band t-shirts. I'm wearing a Nightwish t-shirt right now. This is a uh, uh, there's a story behind this shirt, but it's a really boring one, so I'm not going to tell it. I'm wearing a handsome right furs t-shirt, Metroid shirt, no oh. Hollow Knight shirt. Hollow Knight. I'm wearing a Carbuncle. Yeah, most of my shirts are from Yeeti from AGDQ. Yeah, I have a weird list of variables leading to this shirt, which is that I subscribe to GameFly. And Gamefly used to give you free songs for some reason. I, they might even still do it, but I haven't looked at them forever. So you, they would be like, here's five songs from five different indie bands. I'm like, why is this part of the service? I don't understand. It's Gamefly. Uh, one of them was a song, I'm Confused by Handsome Furs, and I learned more about the band over time. And then they turned out to be uh, playing in Sacramento on the second floor of a bar. So I just went, and I just got mm-hmm. a shirt and both their albums. I'm like, okay, this weird set of specific variables i went with a friend we slept through the other two bands con- performances because they're both garbage <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's really it's a weird experience to have the uh i guess it's like when you <clears throat> it's like the idea of meeting a youtuber or something it's like we we went to a tiny band concert so it was just like you mm-hmm. they went on a stage where there wasn't a backstage so they had to walk through the cow- crowd to get on off the stage and you're like yeah oh, i just bumped into the person that is the band weird <laughs> So before we move too far away from Dauntless, I just wanted to comment on one last thing from it. So the reaction to Dauntless has been kind of interesting because, uh-huh. you know, there are uh, I guess, Keith, you had brought up the point that there are actually a lot more like Monster Hunter clones out there. But, um, oh, yeah, I was I was weirded out by chat being like, wow, the first ever Monster Hunter clone. I'm like, uh, I can think of five right now and I don't even <laughs> yeah. play them. Like, yeah. I have I have Soul Sacrifice on my Vita. I think I uh, for me. There aren't a whole lot of Monster cl- Hunter clones out there that actually are, like, built around mul- multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. God Eater probably was. Toykadin most definitely was not. And I don't count the handheld ones, because... What like, else Toykadin? That sounds really familiar. Because to- you played it. it. Yeah, that was the one that you we guys... tried playing, and then it turned out the multiplayer was, like, oh, this weird... Yeah. Ass- yeah. It's, it's uh, really Toykadin Kiwawi. Yeah. yeah, we couldn't get it to work because of the, um... The, uh... The, the multiplayer had like oh, the, yeah. the built-in the voice built-in chat mic. and we had to, yeah. we had to kill it because we couldn't get each other to shut up. 
<laughs> well, that's not really a. That doesn't mean that it's not built for multiplayer. It just means it's not built pr- specifically to be helpful for your recording setup. Yeah. yeah. Well, even then, like you couldn't do campaign multiplayer. You could just do like random side missions that's and a couple right. other things. Yeah, and, we couldn't mm, do the, still the story it, it, at all. It just wasn't built for what we were trying to do, which sucked. Uh-huh. Um, but so Dauntless is at least you know kind of trying to do what Monster Hunter World is going to do. Uh, before you know, they even announced Monster Hunter World, so this kind of puts them in a sad position. But it's just fascinating for me specifically because a lot of people have been looking for you know kind of more Monster Hunter games that are a little bit more accessible and not on handhelds or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And the reaction I've seen is mostly positive, but there's a lot of people that are absolutely livid that it's not good enough. Like the okay. standard is so like specific that like. All of the stuff that I, I'm doing as part of it is, like, offensive to them. Like, it doesn't so have... A, a, they could just like play big... Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it doesn't have big, explorable worlds that you can, like, run around in. And I'm like, they... I mean, I guess that's true, but we're just here that for would... the monster fights. Yeah. That defeats the entire purpose of the game. It's not called Munter Trap well, Finder and Killer. Thing is, like, it's called Monster, monster Hunter. Hunter. Monster Hunter games are generally actually like you go to an area comprised of like 13 different little sub regions and you have right. to wander around until you can find the uh, creature you're trying to kill and then you have right. to like and chase it around it. while fighting it. Mm-hmm. And like I can totally understand why it's in that game, but I don't see why it has to be in this one. Uh, they also actually have really good uh, keyboard and mouse controls, which uh-huh. surprised me and was I'm super thankful for because my controller is bugged out, so Still? I couldn't play. Yeah, I it just. It loses connection after about five minutes of play, which is annoying. Even with your new dongle? Uh, it's some... I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> but Keith, we're, Keith, we're children. <laughs> I like how we immediately giggled. <laughs> the dongle is such a stupid word. It is such a stupid, stupid people. Stupid world. But that's dongle. what they're called. I know. That's what they're called, right? I know it is. <laughs> but it's still stupid. But, Dongle's such a stupid word. How, how did that get how that become the popular term? It's like how the um, fucking vlog brothers call their description the doobly do. I'm like, what? Stop. But yeah. Oh, are you looking up the origin of dongle? So me, yes. I'll, a lot of a lot of comments I've seen on stream and otherwise is like, stop using keyboard and mouse. And I'm like, it actually works really well. Like. There, are, there's almost no detraction for using keyboard and mouse. And in fact, the game seems to be made for keyboard and mouse first. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a person-to-person thing. There's always those people that are like, "I played every Dark Souls game with keyboard and mouse, and I play Super Meat Boy with keyboard and mouse, and I can't do it any other way." Like my brother can't use a controller in a video game because he mm-hmm. doesn't somebody understand. Also, somebody also used uh, my Dauntless video as an avenue to attack me for getting them a virus because they couldn't figure out how to download Guild Wars Two correctly. Wait. What? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I know. So they went to a site other than the official Guild Wars 2 site? I guess so. Listen, they fucked listen, up. you can't They probably fix wanted stupid. to get a cracked version. You can- somehow. It's free. <laughs> they wanted a cracked like the version that had like all the good shit in it. You know it. It's they an know MMO. That's how it works. You can't you can't there get a is- cracked version of a subscription service. Yeah, well, you know what? They don't know that. And I'm they probably got not, because argu- one of their audience has all these really stupid it. children in it. <laughs> that was one of them. It's, that was the stupidest not- childrenest of them. <laughs> the annoying part is, I, I'm actually kind of jealous of Keith and the people that will send paragraphs back in response. I somebody will say something like our, super our, shitty to our me, our and I'll like our essay conversations we have. Yeah, and I will, <laughs> so like somebody will say something really shitty to me in these comments, and then I'll rebut, and then just abject silence, and I'm like. Fucking, like, I want some kind of discourse here, because otherwise I just look like a combative asshole now. YouTube's making it harder and harder to have conversations nowadays because of how, oh, yeah. like... For me, the big one is just to, like, uh, that my... The emails just stopped. I can't get emails for comments yeah. anymore. So I'm that's not useful anymore. That, though, because I actually disabled it. Email because... spam. <laughs> the email, yeah. Well, I had emails filtering automatically into a specific comment-only folder, so it was uh, fine. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh... And it's frustrating that they're gone because now I can't get notified for for comments. And so the only way I can look at comments now is I have one comment tab open for the normal comment dashboard, which is a chronological. For those that don't know, uh, YouTubers can look at all of their comments in chronological order by thread creation date, like a singular singular like Facebook dashboard th- screen, basically. Yeah. Uh, but it sucks because it only shows them by thread creation date, so d- they don't get bumped for responses. 
So the uh, other thing I can do is I can look up first. I can try to keep track of responses of conversations I have by having a separate tab open where I have a constant search for Keith Ballard as the thing because then it shows every single uh, comment that I've responded to because it's searching for my name. But even uh, then, uh-huh. that's still chronological by creation date, and I still have to scroll awkwardly this di- this whole page to try to see if a response has happened or not. Like it's just. As far as I can tell, there's no notification system that you can set up that specifically will res- show you when responses to your comments happen, while without no, simultaneously showing. Yeah, and like we can't I do it, point- and we can't put it on general mode because we get like hundreds of comments a day. So like we literally always have notifications, and yeah. there's no YouTube doesn't have a useful comment system where you can actually like check them one by one like an email inbox. So the moment you open it up like once, they all pretty much are like checked, <laughs> and that's it. If mm-hmm. you remind me after the podcast, I think I actually know how to get you your uh, emails back if you want them. Everything's um, a mess and I'm scared. Yeah, I think part of it is most large YouTubers don't really read their comments because it's un- unsustainable to do so. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, when a large oh, yeah. YouTuber says it's they impossible. read all their comments every single time, all the time, they're literally lying to you, Face. <laughs> it's not yep. possible. YouTube's but, interface the tools... alone does not allow it. The tools don't even exist to know where all the comments are happening all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's just not reasonable. Uh, and yeah, no, we can't get the comments back, uh, the emails back, because what, what happens is I eventually just dis- disabled them, because what, what I was doing is I was getting, like, five emails a day. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was giving me, like, a couple of them and ignoring all the other ones, and that, like, it's just, so it was just genuinely broken. So after about a month of only getting like a handful of uh, emails a day, which is just a random grab bag of nonsense and not re- not reliable, I finally just disabled it because it just wasn't helping. Hey, like, oh yeah, you, comments got, you got 200 comments. Here's three. <laughs> uh, you, my yeah. own, my most common source of more scrap mechanic is Wanderbot. <laughs> actually, he's he, the he only one. He comments on mine too. He's the only one actually that ever does it. I. Bird put up his 3,000 subscribers special. And mm-hmm. <laughs> because I can't congratulate people, because I never know what to say, play more Scrap Mechanic. <laughs> Something that was like never on his channel. Yeah, exactly. I was like, all right, let's just, <laughs> let's just go with this. Why not? <laughs> I remember when we made the carousel a long, I, long time I liked ago. The, I liked the, um, the Scrap park Mechanic rides. where we made the theme park. That was a really fun episode. I'm I'm probably gonna bring I'm probably gonna play a little bit of scrap mechanic solo at some point. I it's still I'm still not ready for it. It's like making music like, machines are are still like a goal though. Yeah, I remember it's that like, one time I had fun in scrap mechanic. You never had fun in scrap mechanic. No. Don't lie to the children. <laughs> no, I never have fun a single time. Oh, you should play you should play with your old pal Bird. He'll be able to uh to show you how to have fun in scrap mechanic. God, that game's interface. <laughs> you have to fight it. <laughs> you have to fight it so hard to just do things. You get an things. unsorted list of every block in the game. Oh, how does it not have tabs? Like, um, how? You know, tabs are a tool of the proletariat. <laughs> <laughs> the bourgeoisie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't hear a bougie tabs. Did you, re- did you ever read that word as burgoys for, like, years yes. as a kid? Yeah, because I was a child. And I, I was thought, like, "What the hell is this word?" Yeah, it's like, used constantly in books, and it'd be, and I'd pronounce it that way. But the, but the only <laughs> thing, the only time I can ever think of it ever being pronounced in any media ever was that one like Madonna song. I oh, always oh, thought that it was God. bourgeois. No, nah, bourgeoisie. Yeah. It's well, bourgeoisie. Well, bourgeoisie is the plural form. Bourgeois is the like, the adjective form. So if you want to oh. describe something as being like bouge, bougie. Then you say it's like bourgeois, but uh, when you're referring to the class of people, you call it the bourgeoisie. Uh, hmm. That's yeah. Let's see what is it. Oh yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Li- uh, music by Mu- Ma- by Madonna is the only song I've ever seen that uses the word bourgeoisie <laughs> in anything I, I can uh, see. I um I used to think that Hermione's name in the Harry Potter books was called Hermione. Hermione. Yeah. One? Army one. I misread it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I misread the prefix of the perfects. So when they were talking about like, oh, he's a prefect of the house of Potter or whatever. You know, we should do a dramatic reading. 
We should do a dramatic reading of the Harry Potter books where okay. every pronunciation is designed to make people angry. It's a terrible idea. No. Oh, <laughs> like, a troll read through. Oh, instead, no. of, instead of Severus Snape, it's Severus Snape. Mm. <laughs> Severus Snake. It's like how uh, Bing is several snakes. The, uh, <laughs> the British Comedy Channel Bing is currently doing uh, a reading through uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pride and Prejudice Lit Edition. <laughs> what are they all ah. drunk while reading Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's supposed to be like modern, as in like lit stuff. I still mm -hmm. haven't actually listened to any of them, but I just look at the thumbnails. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, modern lit, does that mean they tried to transcribe it into sort of a modern no. kind of speech no. pattern? No. Or no. no. Lit as in let's get lit. No. She doesn't she doesn't mind. know. Slang. I, I don't know those. No, she has no, no idea. Let's see. Nah. Let's see. I one of this one says stop talking such jive, hubby. Pride and Prejudice Lit Edition, uh <laughs> chapters one and two. Wow. People will oh, yeah. watch anything if you put it on YouTube, huh? Oh, well, wait. Yeah. Now, yeah. would Miss people Bennett gets be able primo to... aggro over some new, new neighbor, but Mr. Bennett is all like, fam, please, but on the DL goes to see him, and when she she finds out what uh, she flips Good bare Lord. tables. Good <laughs> Is the uh, description of the video. <laughs> so Good God. People, people pr could probably only film such videos if they were with works that are beyond the like 70 plus year. Like yeah. they have to be common, like public domain, right? The pinned comment is ow, right in my favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got here. Of the bourgeoisie. Yeah. And I don't know. What hey, anyone play, play Hellblade? <laughs> play what? Anyone play Hellblade? Send was sacrifice. I was nope. looking at that one. Is it interesting? It's supposed to be a game about PTSD. Oh. Huh. But I still haven't played it. I, mean, I haven't played it either. Apparently, it was under that. fire for a little it. while because they found out there was a, supposed to be a mechanic where if you die too many times, it deletes your save. But apparently, mm. but it's apparently not like, but it's not like a Dark Souls type game where like there really isn't that much risk of dying anyway. So it's kind of just like a more of a metaphor thing than an actual thing you'll encounter. And then eventually it came out that people seem to be saying that there actually just isn't actually that death mechanic in the first place, and it was a lie. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that, it looks. Um, so that maybe was, just to incite That fear. was the controversy cycle of this game at one point. <laughs> huh. But uh, some people are very psyched about it. I still haven't gotten around to it because every game comes out every fucking two days. <laughs> but it's from the people that made Heavenly Sword, Enslaved Odyssey of the West, and DMC Devil May Cry. So it's that company, that mm. like double A company that keeps making interesting games in Ninja Theory. But wait, so Enslaved, we did play through Enslaved and we thought the ending was really weird. It didn't record right though, so we never released it, did we? Do you ever Which release any enslaved? of the series? Uh, every single cutscene was whenever anybody would talk, so I gave up on it. What a weird problem. Yeah, so like, literally all of the gameplay was fine, any like, in-game dialogue was fine, but the moment a cutscene would happen, it would just shit itself so hard. Were you playing it on PC? Yeah. Okay, I have it on 360, so if I ever play it, I'll just play that copy. And that'll probably okay. fix that yeah. problem. Mm. Yeah, I've, had, I've had it just sitting there. I have I have DMC and Enslaved just sitting on a shelf waiting to be played that well, I still haven't played. If you do, send me the cutscenes and I'll just use them. <laughs> and I'll and put my playthrough up. Put them into yeah. your videos. Do you still have all the footage? I, yeah. When did you record I, I don't it? Delete, I, uh, oh, it was like a year or two ago. It was the summer of 2015. I, want, so, I was waiting to find out like it was ago. from th three and a half years ago, and you'll like you'll fix it and put all the cutscenes in, but it'll be like unrecognizable as far as content goes <laughs> that it's even from you and your audience would be like, who is this other person? <laughs> well, this is from this three is years back ago. When I was still, this is back when I was still using DX Story and my Yeti, oh, so I'm going to sound different. Oh god! Yeah. And, and I was <laughs> different too. Yeah. So, yeah, so this was weird. this was the first time she had come to visit after we'd uh, separated for. We didn't separate. Mm -hmm. You don't well, call it separation. Yeah, it is. That's you definitely not the way to yeah. describe it. You <laughs> we were living in different house, states, and I moved back yeah. to my parents' yeah. house. When we succumbed was... to crippling poorness, <laughs> like that was that was the funny thing that happened when we uh, you started uploading some of the uh, Dark Souls Three co op stuff again. Is that you were mm -hmm. like everyone was like, why does everyone sound weird? And you were like, oh. uh... Bird fucks up the recordings and teams. Uh, so and uh, Bird, uh, Keith probably had to like edit in the Teamspeak audio. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, no, uh, that's just what we used to sound like. 
That was just yeah, our actual microphones because none of us were using AT twenty twenties yet. Yeah, we're all yeah. using the good shit. I was so using a, we all yeah, sound like real people. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what you had, but I know that uh, Wander had a Yeti and I had a Snowball at the time of recording our Dark Souls three playthroughs. I had and a um, M Audio, which is like kind of slightly yeah. better than a Snowball, but way worse than a Yeti. So I think our audio is just gonna like magic. Oh yeah, because when I get to the DLC videos, our our audio is just gonna oh, magically gonna change good. quality in that series. Because <laughs> yeah. there, yeah, there was a big there was a big time gap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's we waited, be sad, we waited for I both have... to be out. Uh yeah, all of all the footage that we do together is with the the good microphones. But whenever I do solo stuff on my own, it's gonna be with the Yeti. So I'm like, mm. yeah, because <laughs> I, I can't figure out how to plug in the. Uh... I can't figure you, out how yeah. to you're, you're, share my microphone setup with anybody else because it's like rat's nest cables. Well, you've plugged <laughs> it into some kind of like box, haven't you? Well, it's yeah, kind of weird we up. don't have like an XLR setup anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's much easier just to have a plug-in USB microphone. Mm-hmm. The complexity rises so fast when, I, when you start recording with other people. Yes. It's bad yes, enough it when does. you're doing it over the internet because you have to set up like voice meter type stuff to figure out all the audio channels, but it's still pretty, it's like significantly harder when you're sitting in, in the same room on right. an audio mixer and everything just starts falling apart. We've had, yeah, at I've least had so many you, failed recordings with Andrew that it's just not even funny anymore. At least when you do a, uh, do test recordings, goddamn. At least when the you do stuff over the internet. The number of different problems cannot <laughs> be tested for sometimes. At least when you do it over the internet, you can, like, shove everybody into one single audio track and then uh, balance it. And it's all digital, so it's up yeah. to the other person that's sending the signal to make sure that their shit's set up correctly. So, collaborating over the internet is, like, actually pretty straightforward, assuming A, you have a good TeamSpeak server that has a good latency, and B, um, most of the TeamSpeak server is really what does it. You're just uh, adding does, more you stops. Be... You're just adding more steps on top of the normal solo stuff is the main difference. Effectively, yeah. When you are playing with other people, like uh you you have to physically have like a separate microphone for them. And yeah. that's like difficult enough. And you have to figure out how to balance them and then how to do how to post process right. the audio because no two people ever sound like they're the same volume ever. Mm-hmm. period <laughs> forever like yeah. we, had a, we had a session where we had uh we recorded like two hours of ukulele to find out that there were encoding errors where the whole video was fucking up then to only try to fix that problem then start a new recording session where the second recording session one of our xlr cables just died midway through and no one knew like that kind of uh-huh. shit just going wrong where it's like come on we're, we've been here all day and a everything's just dying? everything's just kaput like we just get yep. nothing out of the experience kaput <laughs> <laughs> Poopy. That's not funny. Sounds great. <laughs> I'm offended. How dare you? I beat, su- I beat Sundered Wander. Yay! Oh, mm. we're going to talk about Sundered again? Alright, I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, that last zone is not good. Oh, here we uh, go. Yeah, the, you mean the third area or the like? The third area. Lead up to the last boss. Yeah, yeah it was. The entire chocolate. zone is full of instant death traps that make you reload the entire. Like you do the, like the one minute loading time that's way too long for a two D yep. side scroller, and then you have to re-explore the whole place again, only to maybe fall off the same spot again because it's like weirdly hardcore platforming with with a, a permadeath like a semi permadeath system that throws you back. It's not permadeath at all, but it it re, it re randomizes the map again every single time, and it's just a nightmare. Yeah, one of them's I a didn't gauntlet. Have that worth... Problem as much? Oh, you know what? You went uh, you went resist, didn't you? Yeah, I have so, none of your mobility tricks that you apparently have. Yeah, so I had like slow fall that I could actually use to climb walls freely. Nope. I eventually became Spider Man. Wait, did Wander succumb to the? Like... Oh yeah, I oh yeah. Full... I went full Eldritch, like, horror person. Uh, that was great. The uh, last um, boss How many tentacles okay, did you gain? He had a lot of tentacles. Uh, he could turn he into, a like, a, a, a silhouette gargoyle. <laughs> no, yeah. like, I had no mobility tricks of any real kind, and the game was obliterating me, and, like, what really was brutal in particular is that, like, in two of the zones, uh, was it one of them has those weird like tentacle thorn briar monsters that sit still, but they shoot a billion like thorn yep. tentacles out and just fill the screen with damage. 
and like Those the, things the, wrecked me too. And like the the thorn tentacle knocks you back in addition to doing damage, and one of them can send out like five of them. But when you get into the gauntlet area that they're in, that zone is like, hey, you want thirty of these enemies at once? So at some point, the entire screen is just covered in damage, and you're like, I don't know what the game wants of me. I don't know what it wants. Like, you can't fight them all because the, the, the it's so damaging and the screen's so covered in damage that you cannot fight back. And they also respawn almost instantly, so you're just fucked. But you can't run past them because they're vertically above you and they just knock you back down because your character can't go up fast. You can only jump back and forth over and over again, and that's your only mobility to, for climbing up mm -hmm. a chute. And they'll just knock you back down. So, like, it actually feels basically unplayable and you just have to get lucky. Whereas, yeah, if you do the embrace path, you just have tricks that let you get past that kind of stuff. But I did not at all. So it was yeah. a nightmare. And then the other one is there's a whole area that's full of the flying tentacles, octopus monsters that have, like, heat vision. But, like, they shoot mm. a giant super mega flamethrower that covers up, like, a fifth of the screen just from one attack. And the game's like, hey, you want 20 of those ones now? And it's like, the screen is just fire. I can't yep. find my character on the screen. <laughs> it was genuinely an issue where like, oh, where's my character on the screen? Oh, he's falling to his death. I I didn't know. I, I didn't even know that was where I was. <laughs> like, there's a lot of issues was... of like screen shake and obf obfuscation of visuals where you just can't tell where you are in the game and what and how to do things. It was a neat game made by some cool designers from like a, a conceptual standpoint marred by actual like terrible design. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at your final boss fight, which is quite different from mine. Yeah, I, I really appreciated the that final boss. Like at first I was like, this is kind of suck bad. How would you do this with uh how would you do do this as like a, a well a resist player? And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, it's a completely so different how fight. Did, how yeah. did the endings differ aside from the boss battle itself? Was um, there among other things, I I straight up lose my weapon as a resist character during the final boss fight you fight against the trapezohedron <laughs> so your weapon becomes the boss which means you don't have a melee attack okay. oh, so, so then i'm like cannon fight him? yeah so then i was like i guess i better do a cannon build for this playthrough so i put the the bullet respawner and the massive mm -hmm. bonus damage cannon effects and stuff like that and uh and i just shot the boss to death which involved mm -hmm. a lot of carefully like finding platforms that you could I had, to, I had to get down to a science, the ability to go to the top left, the top corner platform that was in the room, drop through it, and then press Y at the exact time that they would, while I was falling, the cannon would, shot would come out of me where it would hit the weak spot of the boss. So that, no. there was some finagling so involved. on a scale of one to supremely tedious, how was that? It was fine. It's nowhere near as oh. bad as the actual levels full of hordes that were like a nightmare. The bosses were the best part yeah. of the game. The real bosses. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was the wondering, real, like, well, the did... mini bosses were a bummer. How did the epilogues change? Like, did Wanderer's no character epilogue. turn into a vile yeah, monster? The interesting or did your point is, well, like, yeah, find their way to freedom. I, my character did turn into a vile monster. You're correct about that. Okay. Um, the interesting thing, though, is there's no epilogue. Not really. It's just like it just shows you a short cutscene. Unless you went with the neutral path, at which point it gave you a proper epilogue where your character is like standing out in the desert again, and she's like. You know, kind of like, whew, I'm finally done. And then her sword starts talking to her, and she's like, what the fuck? And then it ends, <laughs> and that's it. And it's like, wait, that's the one that gets the epilogue? The one that doesn't require all the extra steps? <laughs> I, was, I was mildly offended about that. Mine doesn't... You, you get an ending. I don't even get an ending. Yeah, your character just kind of stops there. It's like, well, guess I'm done. What happens is you defeat the boss, and a big vortex kind of explodes with the boss being defeated. And mm -hmm. then it just says, Sundered, and the show's credits. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, that's the hey. ending. There's no, like, cutscene, really. It's just the exploding boss, and then that's the end of the fight. It's, uh... That's it. I feel like flashing the title of the game is such a trendy thing to do these days. Just, like, title screen, like, boah! Boah! I think it would I work... I think it would work if the uh, the title screen somehow like carried a revelation with it. Like if you flash the title screen at the that's very end, it's like, like, oh, that's, that's the game I'm playing. Made. Yeah, I think it's a carryover from how television series were developed back in the day. You know, you have your intro, your theme song, and then bam, the title, and then I guess, more theme but, song. And but this TV's is like been around after, for a while, so video games should, you know. 
if they were gonna steal stuff from TV, if uh, you know, <laughs> why is it new? <laughs> oh, I forgot the point I was gonna say. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah you wanted it to be, you want it to be a dramatic revel- revelation, so it would, um, it would like, boom, title screen sundered right after somebody becomes um, thundered. Thundered. What does mm. what does sundered mean? To be torn <laughs> apart. Oh, okay. Um, like sundered armor or to torn split asunder. asunder. Yeah. Sundered yeah, is kind bird. of one of those words that I always like I know and it's in my vocabulary and I never mm-hmm. knew what it meant. Kind of like Agamemnon. But you'll just say it or, sometimes. Um, Agamemnon was a pup- quiz, though. So you would just you would just use the word sundered without knowing what it meant and just throw it around yes. and just yeah, see if anyone in my see mind, if anyone sundered catches just you. Meant, like, no, in my mind, sundered meant vaguely something like destroyed. So I was like, ah, that's been sundered. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know what it actually meant. It was just, it was like, specifically. It was just like, ah, it's a synonym, some sort of, you know, using the context of something being blown up. <laughs> and, you know, but not blown up, but, you know, blown up with a sword. <laughs> what? Being blown up with a sword. A blow up uh, sword? Like at a convention? I've been oh, no, no. I enjoy um, rattling my thoughts on to the point where Keith is completely lost. <laughs> it easy. happens. It's very easy. It is very easy. It helps to be completely insane. So, topic change, <laughs> Keith. You wanted to bring up. Uh, I mean, seeing as you had that big long rant about the immortal Iron Fist. You want to talk about the defenders for a bit? Take us wildly off track. Yeah. So Whoa, here we part go. Of it. <laughs> I made a, I had a rant about the immortal Iron Fist. Yeah, I remember I was playing Warframe and you were uh, very <laughs> vehement against the immortal Iron Fist for being. Well, I thought you just it was for really being what? poorly written. Bad. We haven't played Warframe. Frame? No, I was playing Warframe while doing the podcast. Oh, I have vivid memories I was like, of like running. I was like, the timeline with us doing Warframe and or- Immortal Fist even being a show that's out doesn't line up. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm just. I mean, I'm I, just using it as like context for how I remember this. Iron Fist was just a boring show that was made too fast and wasn't prepared properly. Like people didn't, the characters didn't train properly to know what they knew how to like. The performances for all the everything was just bad like they they just like here's the routine <laughs> 10 minutes before the scene good luck like it was the why, opposite what was it was the problem o- with thing it was bad <laughs> uh, like it, it's like why was well, it, it bad because it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> like iron fist was like the opposite of the matrix where like in the matrix they yeah. like you know what's easier than teaching uh you know what's easier than teaching a martial arts how to act teaching an actor Martial arts. There we go. We'll teach Keanu Reeves yeah. martial arts, and then he'll do the movie. Uh, they basically didn't teach the protagonist martial arts, and they, the, the actor just like did a little bit of practice before each scene to try to sort of set it up, and like it's all, all the fights <laughs> oh. are super awkward and unconvincing, and all, but also like the immortal fist character, Iron Fist is what he's called. Shit, I'm like you got infected me with the immortal fist. Uh, well, he's the immortal Iron Fist. They like, don't that's call the him that. Title. Shush. Shush. Funny. That actually Can't hear me. That really amuses me. Do you think uh, if it was like way, way back in the day they would have gotten wasn't wasn't Norris a martial arts master? Sort of. Chuck Norris? He's never been an actor though. He always sucked. Yeah, he was a martial artist through and through. Yeah. He, but, like, he's if, like would um, he have played the role of given the option like way, 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 way back in the day. I mean, uh, I don't probably. know. Probably. So, I, I mean, wanna, I can call up I, Chuck I just, Norris I, and no, 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 figure no, it no, out for you. Wanna, I mean, I people out, like, like to work. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm just wondering if there was uh, an equivalent that could have been found today. Like, couldn't they have recruited someone? That- <laughs> Steven Seagal. There you go. Ugh, oh, he's so bad, and all of his movies are bad. <laughs> his movies are no. horrid. <laughs> no. Sorry. Is he a martial artist? No. Well, we need to watch a Steven Seagal movie, maybe. What has oh, he been in? He's... We could watch that movie where Steven Seagal and... was it, Is it Sean Austin or something? Are both going into a prison to stop the fact that the prison's having problems? Like, they're having, like, a... 
crime like the, <laughs> like the prisoners have broken out or whatever and they're like and there's like a hostage situation or something they're both going mm-hmm. in and what's amazing is that they'll be in the same scene together and the camera mm-hmm. will be cutting back and forth between them because and they'll never be in the in the shot together and throughout the mm-hmm. entire movie they're never in the same room as each other like breaking in from two different pa- paths and stuff and it's, i'm, I'm convinced the actors separately? never saw each other while the movie was being made i thought that that was what happened that they i think that movie just it. pretends that they're in the same room by cutting to them <laughs> from across the room sometimes like i think they're the two lead actors the entire film never were in the same room together because it was such a cheaply made garbage movie that they couldn't schedule both of this? them oh god it might have been like containment breach or something i don't know i just I just remember, see a picture of the guy he makes like a hundred so movies a year so like you can't keep track yeah, I can get you a picture of Steven Seagal in a bit. And I think I've always heard it in my head as Seagal. Maximum <laughs> Con- Steven Seagal? I forgot how <laughs> yeah. stupid his name is. It's a it's it's called Maximum Conviction. <laughs> That's the name of the movie. Oh, uh, that I don't, guy. you know he. I, my, it's Steve Austin Steven, and Steven Seagal. So they're even both Steves. Uh, <laughs> no, my favorite Steven covers- Seagal thing is like he he made a uh he had a tv show a reality tv show where he would uh put people under citizen's arrest um oh, if you yeah. remember it's called steven seagal lawman and he was Did made we, an honorary uh, deputy of like a, a oh, place in yeah. louisiana and he would just go around and like arrest people did we ever have the conversation about steven seagal's uh the first like little mini paragraph of steven seagal's imdb profile I'm pretty yeah. sure we've had an entire podcast tangent about Steven Seagal before. Well, I'm going to post. I'm looking I'm at this maximum conviction anyway. uh, IMDb page, and I'm like, we've done, we've, I've looked at this during a podcast before. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, cool. striking and somewhat boyishly handsome. You've talked about this during a podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I just need to handsome. remind people that that exists periodically because, like, yeah. holy shit, how out of touch his, can you be? His IMDb says that he's boyishly <laughs> handsome. Oh god! Often I mean, have a, you looked at him? He looks like a little tail. boy. Uh, yeah, often with the ponytail, yes. When it, what part? How are any of these images boyish? Even the old ones from like the '90s that he was in. Uh, he just has a they huge job. Doughy. Doughy. Oh, Doughy. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's really mean. Oh man! That's, was, that, was that from chat, <laughs> or is that Wander no, being terrible? That's, that's me being an awful person. <laughs> because that's him because being it is pretty terrible. A, a I was just looking at pictures of him eating a carrot, and I'm like, and that huh? man should probably oh go. Uh, that's uh, anyway. just mean. You're mean. I, can I wonder what Steven Seagal's best person. Person movie is. Best rated movie. Tr- is that on a trick IMDb. question? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Seems like a Thank trick you for question. Asking. It is. What was the question? How, how do you even find out the highest rated movie? You'd have to check them all, wouldn't they? I got time. Is is Rotten Tomatoes being like DDoSed right now? I couldn't look up. I couldn't look That's... up Steven Seagal on Rotten Tomatoes, which is easier than trying to check the IMDb pages. <laughs> even I just looked the up the latest thing. Steven Seagal movie that has a rating on IMDb three point eight. Oh my god. That that's that's bad. Uh, oh, I want to point out that when you look at Maximum Conviction, it's like pe- on IMDb, it's a 4.9, and it's like people who like this also like this movie, Force of Execution. Really? Who names these? It's a 4.6, <laughs> and it has Steven, Steven Seagal, Seagal and Danny Trejo. He's the producer for all of these movies. These names are Wait, okay. <laughs> like, they're, they're, they don't even try to name these movies. Here's a, re- here's a movie called Mercenary Absolution 4. He just. Constantly plays a hitman or a bodyguard or a yeah exactly bruiser, doesn't he? Born to raise hell, driven yeah, to I was kill. Just looking at born to raise hell, he was the producer for that one as well. Uh, a hardcore <laughs> Interpol agent is assigned to an Eastern European task force to target gun trafficking and dope running through the Balkans. It's While interesting getting a Russian gun dealer. His team has gotten a bloody street war between a gypsy gang and the Russians. <laughs> Leaving one task force member dead. It's, wow. It's they interesting. Sell, like, the worst cops. It's interesting to know that there's an actor who's made an entire career out of being the discount DVD at a gas station. Ouch. Yeah. It's Ouch. Just, when you're on one of those long drives through the desert, you get to those gas stations that start showing, D- they start having DVD shelves everywhere. And those, uh-huh. that's where the Steven Seagal movies live. <laughs> it's yeah. just Steven Seagal and all of the Marvel movies. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the difference is that the Marvel movies are new. <laughs> the Steven Seagal movies have just been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Lying in a wait on that shelf forever. Because <laughs> one they day... They still have a box just full of maybe. Steven Seagal VHS tapes in the back that they haven't thrown out yet. So <laughs> VHS there you tapes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jesus. Wow, we got off target to topic too. Yeah, recently I decided to go back and watch all of the old horror films that I never got around to. Like, uh... Nightmare on Elm Street and Hellraiser and a number of those fun things. Oh, I think I finally saw the entirety of Scream as well. I'd only ever seen snippets of it on TV. Did you understand it? Yes. Hmm. I just yeah, I, I, did. I don't I don't know if Shell understands irony or not. I have to check. No, like, no. It I mean it I understand like what they were doing with like the boyfriend and his friend and everything and it was just it was you just couldn't help but laugh at it which is probably why they made that scary movie the way it was i mean it was sort of based off of it right what are you raising your hands for i don't i've only ever seen scary movie yeah it's just oh. interesting your only context for knowing scream is by seeing scary movie or i mean i'd only ever seen the very beginning with drew barrymore um, Did you know the people that made a lot of the scary movie movies were the same people that also brought us Airplane? That's like the secret. Really? That's the secret yep. thing that's kind of dumb about scary movie is that it's like it's parodying a movie that is a parody of horror game movies already. Mm -hmm. Like Scream is a parody of horror movies. That's the point. Yes. And they're doing a parody yes. of that. I'm like, what? You, well, you don't? Did you not get it? <laughs> <laughs> also, the uh, highest no, rated not. The highest rated Rotten Tomatoes movie of all time for Steven Seagal. Everything he's ever produced, directed, or acted in is under siege with a 76. That's his high water mark. Followed by Machete at 72. <laughs> That's to be fair. There's a lot of no score here. <laughs> <laughs> he has a long career of just people just not reviewing his movies and just not bothering. <laughs> well, well, I mean, to, mm -hmm. to review the movie, you have to watch it, so... There's a real movie called Agency of Vengeance, Dark Rising, Dark Rising 2, Summer Strikes Back. Summer Strikes Back? Yep. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. A season can't punch you. I don't know what words mean. So well, Steven Seagal topic. plays a guy named Summer. <laughs> Summer knows what you did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. Yes. So we we're just talking about that. the problem yeah. is if we start talking about the Marvel universe on their Netflix series, isn't that going to get out of hand too? Like the other one. If you talk about Marvel, there's I not... will peace out because the last Marvel movie I've seen was Iron Man. There's nowhere near as as much Netflix Marvel as there is movie Marvel though, because the new Mar like two or three Marvel movies come out every year, so it's just yeah. like multiplying yeah. what how much crap is going on in their universe, whereas. I didn't uh, see Suicide Squad. That was a pretty good Marvel oh movie. Oh god. Uh, uh, but all of Netflix is just four Mar <laughs> it's all of Netflix combined is four different Marvel shows that combine into one Defenders. It's just Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Daredevil. Of which oh, uh, and of those four people knew who what one of them was before they started coming out. <laughs> and that's, okay, that's so probably because of Ben Affleck. Have yeah. they ceased the other series then? And what other series? Wait. Well, what were we talking about? Were we talking about Suicide Squad or were we talking about the Defenders? Well, we were talking. Uh, about, we nothing. almost kind of, sort of, not really. Because you guys were talking about, about Ben Affleck, so I'm like, wait, but he. Wander asked he's me about the Defenders stuff, and then in the pro before I could even get anywhere into it, we everything deflected as hard as possible away from it. Is basically what happened. Yep. Right. Because and so we right. basically so never talked about it. So what you're saying is the Defenders has. Luke Cage, Daredevil, and a couple of the other uh, characters so they, they, that they made have one season for four different uh, Marvel characters on Netflix, and they right. made they actually made two seasons of Daredevil. So it's the exact same formula as the movies where they made two Iron Man movies, but one of everybody else before the, the Avengers movies. Uh, oh. The Avengers movie came out. Uh, now they're doing a Defenders, which is literally like New York version of the Avengers, and it's just those four. Sh it's just a scenario that brings those four characters together for a season. And man, the pacing's fucked. It's so uh -uh. bad. Like I have, I've only watched two episodes so far, so I can't. Re I talk about the quality of the show, but the first two episodes is nothing. It's just nothing. Like 
I, and uh, this is the problem I talked about with Wander and you about the idea of like what was going to happen when they get around to making Infinity War when they have all oh. the, the, this ridiculous cast. Like, how do you juggle all those characters? And mm-hmm. the the defender's answer is that they don't. <laughs> so oh. the first episode is an hour long, and it's basically just fifteen minutes dedicated to each of the four characters one by one, just kind of just reestablishing the status quo that you already know from watching the shows they're from. Let's mm-hmm. briefly reintroduce them to the audience. Yeah, it's and like then a total waste of time. Up. It's like, by the way, Daredevil's a lawyer, but also a Catholic. Jessica <laughs> Jones is this private investigator and an alcoholic that doesn't like people. Like, it's just like recapping their characters <laughs> and wasting your time. Aside you... from, aside from maybe five minutes of establishing that Sigourney Weaver plays the villain this season, and that's it hmm. for a whole hour. I'm just like, holy shit, nothing is happening. And then the second. Now- the second episode, I'm just like, somebody get into legal trouble so Daredevil can do something. Somebody just <laughs> somebody get in trouble because I know it's gonna happen. Someone's gonna get in trouble. They're gonna be in the interrogation room because they're always in the same interrogation room with the same police officers in every movie. And then the lawyer comes in and is like, Don't say anything, but it's gonna be Daredevil because that's why he's a lawyer, is how you get them together. Somebody do something wrong, and I'm just waiting for like an hour. And then literally the Didn't last happen. shot of the second episode is Daredevil being like, don't say anything. Like on Jessica Jones walking in like, like to be your lawyer. And I'm like, <laughs> finally the show can start after two hours. <laughs> it's like, you know that, you, you know that like, you know that Avengers and Civil War were like over by now, right? Like mm-hmm. they're only like two and a half hour movies. Why did it take two hours to do the basic setup with only four characters? They only have four heroes. Why'd this take two hours? The pacing's fucked. I might like the show eventually when I finish it, but like these first two episodes are a nightmare where nothing happens for two hours. And sometimes that's the all like the time that viewers will actually give a a series before they're like, maybe I don't want to watch it. Like the pilots are supposed to be hooks. I'm a walking dead audience member saying that this show has pacing problems. (laughs) (laughs) It's a disaster. Wow. But we'll see. We'll see if it gets better over time. I, I just want to see more Jessica Jones, so that's enough for me, so I'll just keep watching. I recommend that season. If you guys like David Tennant, you should watch Jessica <laughs> Jones. Is he yeah. right? Because he was... David Have Tennant was the 10th ceased... Doctor on Doctor Who, and he's a really... Right. Just an, an amusing actor, and he plays the Purple Man in Jessica Jones, which is a, a, <laughs> a villain that can just tell people to do stuff, and they'll do it. And he, so he's a total, like, entitled piece of shit that has no value assigned to, like, human life. And, like, he will no just do horrible no. things. Like, he, like, like he, he, he'll just walk into somebody's house and just become a member of the family and just order people to do whatever he feels like. And, like, if the kids annoy him, he'll just order them to go stand in the closet and he'll just maybe forget to ever tell them to come back out. And they'll just stand uh... there until somebody finds them, basically. And, like, s- stuff like that. Like, he's a terrible human being. And uh, it's a really fun counter for a character because Jessica Jones is a private investigator where her only power is super strength and that's it. So like mm-hmm. she doesn't have like a big long list of flashy powers. She's basically just going around and investigating things and her counter is a villain that can just tell people to do stuff, including her. So like it's a what? it's an enemy that completely disarms her abilities entirely in just mm-hmm. season one. Well, I, what are like the limitations of that ability? If he's not concentrating on that person, and you just said that he could so forget that, that's, someone's that's there. What the, that's what the show is so. about: is that they have such a problematic uh, villain to deal with that they have to like analyze all the vectors of like how his power works and what, and figure out if it has limitations. Because otherwise, how do you deal with that? Like, how do you stop? That, that? sounds like it'd be really interesting. It's a really good. I I had so much fun with Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. That was a really good season, and so was one and a half seasons of Daredevil. First season, <laughs> the first season has Kingpin played by what's his name, the best, one of the best actors ever. Uh, Daredevil oh, uh, Kingpin, um, Steven Seagal. Actor. Fuck you, uh, <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio <laughs> plays Kingpin. Yeah, which is like a fantastic yeah. choice. And then in season two, uh, John Bernthal plays the Punisher. Oh. Like, it's a ridiculous but, cast. But then the second half of season two makes the mistake of remembering Elektra exists, and she's a terrible character in all incarnations, as far as I can tell. <laughs> so the whole second season is garbage. The second half of the second season. Is Kingpin still, like, a very large, corpulent kind of guy? Or did yeah. they make him... Did they, okay. No, he's a big guy, and Vincent D'Onofrio is a big person, too. It's not. He's not cartoonish-sized, because, like, Kingpin has impossible body proportions. 
in the cartoon mm-hmm. versions. He's got like tiny little legs. But like Vincent D'Onofrio is the guy that played the sugar water alien in Men in Black. And the like this is sugar my water. rifle guy that kills himself in a uh, in uh, Apocalypse Now. Mm. Oh right. He was start uh pile. I, I sugar pile? water. Uh, <laughs> the pile you're thinking of um not Apocalypse Now, you're thinking of the other movie. Oh, you're right, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. I was I was thinking of um what the hell's it called? Oh, There's so many jacket. movies about Full Metal Jacket as the yeah, I, I like the picture. Yep. It, it's just so easy to, to so get so like, many. It's Vietnam not hard movies. to look like Kingpin <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> just get a broad, I mean, bald character or actor. You, you need to be broad, but I mean, who's got the proportions of where their pelvis is like seven times wider than their head? <laughs> <laughs> I just one... thought that he was supposed to be obese. Nah, he's supposed to be like a bouncer. There actually is a... Oh my god, I've actually seen a guy that looks like Kingpin in real life. He was uh, one of my friend's brothers. Uh, well, he was one of my brother's friends. And uh, he like had the exact same proportions as Kingpin, and I've never seen a dude like that. I'm a pretty tall guy, and he had like nine inches of like height on top of me. And he worked as a bouncer. And his hands were like Andre the Giant hands. It was it was absurd. The first time I saw him, I was like, holy shit, is this person a real human being? (laughs) But yeah, like he basically like he he moonlit as a bouncer. And he said that the entire time he's been a bouncer, he's never gotten into a fight because everyone is scared shitless of him. And they never start any trouble because they look at him and they're like, oh, never mind. I'm out. <laughs> How tall am I? I am 6'2". So this person was like 7 feet tall? About, yeah. Jesus. My he... brother's like 6'6". Six, six. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. about it. But he, and he gets health problems already for being tall. I don't think this guy had health problems because he was extremely active because of his bouncer job. So he said, like, he was at the gym and running constantly because he wanted to be even more intimidating. I just hear horror stories all the time. Like, my brother gets hospitalized periodically. And, like, a friend of mine uh, from college was, like, 6'6", also. And, like, he like he's like, oh, yeah, my mm-hmm. uh, my, my lung just sort of collapsed because I'm too tall. I'm like, oh, great. What? Huh? Wait, is it? <laughs> That's is horrifying. This... I Most of what I'd heard had been either, like, joint or heart issues with, like, hypertension and organ failure yeah. and other things. Well, but... if you're really tall, you can get um, Marfan syndrome, which, like, basically means that your secondary tissues in your entire body are really weak, which mm-hmm. impacts your eyes, it impacts your heart, it impacts your tendons and joints and stuff like that. It's uh, what Abraham Lincoln had. Yeah, there's, mm-hmm. there's a reason why hum- the human race is a bell curve instead of, like, a leaderboard. <laughs> like, there's, there's no real reason to strive to keep going further in certain numbers. Like, it's just going to actually be a bad thing for you. Hmm. So, um, I was seeing is everybody but here uh, wears glasses. Or everybody but Shell here wears glasses. Somebody had asked about this. So my audience, I'm streaming my face cam for once, and they've noticed that my glasses are permanently off kilter. Do you guys ever have to deal with that or no? No. Um, When I had wire glasses, they had that problem, so I got tired of using wire glasses as a result. Mm. I use thick frames for that purpose because they always are shaped the same way. I have mostly wire glasses, I guess. They're, I mean, a little bit thicker on the sides because I want them yeah. to not just snap on me. But so... Because um, okay. if you if you ever uh, bend any part of them in any way, like, that's just a problem you can never yep. quite un- just, unbend yeah, yeah, correctly. It yep. just stays there. Well, so I have uh, astigmatism. And oh, yeah. so I've always favored my left eye. And mm-hmm. so I've actually noticed that every single pair of glasses, no matter if it's, like, hard frame or not, slowly shifts so that my my left eye is favored over my right because they're slightly like up and downy ish uh i don't know but uh so I, it just always amuses me when people like point that out and uh, like it's i don't also your talk, ears, you know. well yeah that too but i, I don't talk to other glasses <laughs> wearers. so I, I actually was super curious i don't as, like, talk to other glasses wearers. Uh, <laughs> there can only be one the highlighter how often, 
how <laughs> often do you actually like talk to people about your glasses in any like substantive fashion? Don't you guys? This have is the glasses? first time I ever. I think yeah. There aren't like glasses conversations, but I'm surrounded by people that wear glasses. I, I don't. I I wear my, glasses. My brother and my mom glasses. wear glasses. One of my roommates wears glasses. My glasses just are everywhere. This pair is particularly like the overly guy with the tight. Collapsed lung wore glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this pair is like overly tight so it like doesn't move at all but it also hurts like hell after the end of the day oh, yeah, so, Andrew wears glasses yeah. yep. mm -hmm. I uh I'm looking forward to getting LASIK sometime in the next couple of years my, my prescription has been stable for a long time I'm looking forward have, like, to the amazing future where they can give you a shot in your arm that fixes your <laughs> eyes because yeah, LASIK okay, is we're horrifying. All looking, we're all looking forward to 2085, all right? So, there you are. <laughs> I want to fix I, my uh, eyes, but I, LASIK is fucking scary. LASIK is yeah. awesome, man. And they're, it's not even the machines, permanent. The machines that make LASIK work are so cool. They're able to, like, track the movement In of your eye. In a hypothetical, to... not my eye kind of way. <laughs> No, 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 my no, one no, no, friend, no. They, the most awesome. that she experienced afterwards was like dry eye for a couple weeks. Yeah, but it's the it, it, dry eye, and they're like photosensitive. But like the, the 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 machine has a camera in it that tracks the motion of your eye to make sure that the laser beam doesn't uh, uh, like hit the wrong part of your you eye. Know, you know, eye, like Dead Space like Two, everyone's favorite segment from Dead Space yeah, Two. Yeah, exactly. I have part. never seen but anything the spike. from Dead Space Two except for that segment, and I. <laughs> Wish yeah. I had so not. they made a machine that does that. So it'll track the way that your eye moves and just like make sure that it always puts the uh, laser it, beam where they want it to be. And only has a failure rate of you. <laughs> well, I mean, it didn't work in dead space, but you know, you don't live in, in order dead to space. Fix, in order to fix like glaucoma, they actually have to like sear a hole into uh, the iris of your eyes so that you yeah. can have liquid properly like filter in and out. Keith and I will go for eye surgery after this conversation. Yeah, I mean, after it, this it's conversation, not like, it's not like the 1800s. They you just don't like, think I thought like, about this already. <laughs> they just took like one of those needle, like a sewing needle, and just heat it up over the stove, and then just like right in the eye to like get the glaucomas out. Cut, cut, uh, get every, them out. <laughs> gotta, every, you gotta, everybody's we'll immediately just like, uh, never mind. We'll fix their blindness. Uh, we'll fix their blindness with leeches with needles, on the eyes. With leeches, <laughs> eye leeches. <laughs> Eye leeches. Oh god! Like, like Stevo. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen like those like cloudy areas with like the lenses, and they have to actually slide them out of the inner layer of the eye and stuff? Nope. That, that's a weird surgery. Why are we it's, looking at these things? It's cataracts. Yeah, cataracts. Yeah, yeah. You can actually like take cataracts out. Point of, of order. Eye. Fuck this conversation. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm looking forward to getting LASIK because my. <laughs> I don't like my glasses very much. They give me a headache, um, and I wear them I... all the time. So, ergo, I have a headache 100% of the time I'm awake. And uh, my prescription is only a negative two in both eyes, which, for people who don't know, is an incredibly weak uh, prescription. But it's also enough to make it so that you're useless without your glasses. Oh, it's like, so, Wander, how do you feel about neuromods? <laughs> um... Oh, we're talking about Observer now. No, no, no. In, in Prey, Prey, you get neuromods as your skills in the game, and you get them by injecting directly through your eye. <laughs> yeah, ah. it's, a, it's a two. It's a thing that fits over your eye and sh and shoots out two needles directly into your eye, so that it can reach your like your brain and actually give you these skills by basically dialing them into your brain. It's just like horrifying to think about how often your character's stabbing themselves in the eye over the course of the game. But that doesn't make sense. Why would you why would you have the needles go into the eyeball in order to access to your brain unless it's all visual input that's Magic. like being programmed into your brain. Yeah, this is we're talking about a video game here, Shell. The secret is yeah. horrifying <laughs> sci-fi magic tech. Yeah. It doesn't really mm -hmm. make that much sense in world either because over the course of the game you use like I think I use like a hundred neuromods or something and the instructions for the neuromods say that you have to like put this thing over your eye for like five minutes per neuromod and I'm like that's I, I don't think I did that. Yeah there <laughs> was one section where I was like gleefully fabricating about 40 of them when I finally yeah. got the blueprint for it. Yeah it's and really then... easy to do gleefully before when you're not thinking about it being a thing you inject through your eye. Yep. 
Oh, here's a lovely picture. I guess I'm just going to use that bee. picture of Dead Space as the thumbnail for this picture for yeah. this podcast at this point. It's a, it's a <laughs> bee on somebody's eyeball, and they're stinging it. Huh? Stinging an eyeball? That's, that's got to be a Photoshop. Why are you looking up? You're looking at pictures of people's eyes being stung by bees. <laughs> I thought it would gross you out more than make you question my sanity. Well, like like the Japanese hornet like going after somebody's eye or something like that. Like oh, giant thing. those things are the worst. Yeah. Nah, it's it's no, a Photoshop. This conversation picture. doesn't bother me. It's just the i the idea <laughs> of getting that surgery bothers me. Why? It's like how I can talk about sharks, but I don't want to be around a shark. That's the difference. So this conversation doesn't bother me at all. No, I'm just <laughs> like Never mind. fuck you and your eye surgery. <laughs> no. Never mind. I'm bored now. Then my eyeballs. Yeah, you're not trolling me at all. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Never mind. You can't just bring up... Like, like, like some people in chat try to just bring up sharks like I'm going to be, like, set off. I'm like, no. It's fine. What's, I understand what a shark is. <laughs> I just don't want to see one. Like, be in real life. What's the worst surgery everyone's had to have? Uh, I've only ever had one surgery. Wisdom teeth? Wisdom teeth. Okay. Not a single one. I think they... <laughs> yeah, he, I think has, he still has all his wisdom teeth. I'm pretty um, sure my jaw pops because of that surgery. Mm. Uh, that's due to jaw tension, but yeah. I, I don't, I don't yeah, think it happened before the surgery. No, what will happen I, if, is uh, after that surgery, your jaw will be very tense because your body will be recovering from it and you'll keep your muscles really tight. And if your muscles and your like jaw muscles, if, if the muscles in your face are really tight, then it causes your jaw to pop when you open it. But if you like work on trying to relax your face, and like do like facial relaxation exercises. Are which you are telling real Keith thing. to relax? Because <laughs> like you're gonna more or less have to mail in some teriyaki chicken I, for I that. Think, to I think I've had maybe three in my life. Two were associated with teeth. One being the wisdom teeth. The other one actually, mm -hmm. it was a stubborn baby molar. <laughs> my my <laughs> my family wanted to get me braces in middle school. You know, so I'd be on track to having straighter teeth. And they're like, wait a minute. This is still a baby molar. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't want to fall out. And it, it, there was literally no way this thing was going to fall out in the next like year or so. So they're like, okay, we're we going to dig it, it out yeah. and force the, the adult tooth under it to come up by like tying a chain to it and slowly tightening it every time you go in to get your braces adjusted. Huh. Uh, and the, the good thing was I actually had the same surgeon that did that procedure do my wisdom teeth one and i wasn't under for that because having a family of dentists it's just i like being aware of everything that's going on and asking a lot of questions and stuff so yeah i had my i only had three wisdom teeth but i had them taken out i just had the novocaine that's used to like numb the surrounding areas but other than that yeah i just got up and out and it was perfectly fine yeah, my I think my brother and other friends. Somebody hates took... you right now. What? Sorry. For your lack of dental yeah. issues. What do you mean? <laughs> we were just oh. thinking that I just did a Q and A right before this, and somehow they both went back to my wisdom teeth. Like they asked me, "What's the worst drug you've ever done?" And, and then you ask, "What's the worst surgery?" And they're, they're both the same event. <laughs> like the big, the worst drugs I've ever taken were from the surgery. <laughs> I suppose, like, did you do laughing gas or something? Or what did they no. give you? Laughing gas is completely ineffective. It's the most I tried that thing once ever. and I felt everything, yeah. but I couldn't yeah. respond. Laughing gas is I could, pointless. No, I they, could they, put, they put me under with the whole, like, uh, they did the whole joke with you where they tell you to count and you don't ever actually reach the number they tell you to count to. I'm amazed at how fast I, that, that <laughs> stuff puts I, you out. I <laughs> so my worst drug I've ever taken was either that ever. or the painkiller afterwards. I think it was just Vicodin <laughs> or something, and I was like, I'm afraid of this because of House. <laughs> the show yeah, House told like me that this drug makes you a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like the idea of being put under. I mean, obviously, if it's a really, really serious operation that I'll have to go under for, then sure, I will if right. I ever need that. But for that, I'm like, eh, I don't mind the drilling and the grinding and, you know, the yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't Split get myself put under for no. They like, they ripped my teeth out. Dental whole. stuff, but like so you, you gotta right. get your We're put under for wisdom teeth removal. I have both of my teeth in a bag. Yeah, you can't. It, wisdom teeth removal is like serious oral surgery for a yeah. lot of people. You can't just like yank it out. Like you have to like dig into the gum line to extract. Yeah, I had uh, it. So, so after I came so out of that. it, all I did was take one Vicodin that day, 
then never mm-hmm. again. And then I just gave the rest of them to my dad for his sciatica. Uh huh. Like here, you have actual pain problems. <laughs> I pa- they gave me a whole bottle, and I'm like, what "The fuck do I do with these? I'm already over this." My I face was weird me- shape, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me home and were like, "Just take, you know, six to eight Advil, and if you need yeah. more six after to that, eight Advil." You know, you're only supposed to take like two at a time, mm-hmm. and like only up to six within 24 hours or something. Yeah, it was something like that. But so fortunately. I- I, uh, when I get my wisdom teeth removed, I also had a dental post put in, uh, because I basically was missing, uh, one of my teeth. Uh, it just never grew. It just never appeared. Uh, Mm. so they put in the post and, um, and they took my wisdom teeth out in the same surgery and, uh, they, they put me under with like gas or whatever. And they were like, okay, count down from 10. And before they put it on, I was like, I bet I make it to seven. And I didn't even make it that far. <laughs> I was like, 10, 9, 8, and I was done. I was done by 8. <laughs> Actually, so I, okay. I, I, remember, I remember I woke up, uh, not during, not during, after, uh, after the surgery was done, I woke up, and the nurse was wheeling me into another room, and I had a conversation with her where I said something to the effect of, so, I bet a lot of people say some goofy stuff when they're uh, recovering from this, uh, from their surgeries or whatever. And she was like, mm-hmm. yep. And I said, <laughs> what not did you do? What did you though. say? <laughs> I said, not me, though. And then I passed out again. <laughs> <laughs> so I stuck to my word. <laughs> you and also broke my, I broke my word and stuck to it at the exact same time. <laughs> anyway, so in the post uh, recovery period, uh, they gave me Vicodin. Uh, I took one Vicodin. And I was like, this is way too strong for the amount of pain I'm in. I'm just going to tough it out. And I didn't take any more of the Vicodin. And, um, but I was wrong about that because uh-huh. a couple days later, we discovered that I was allergic to uh, titanium. Oh. Uh, the post that they put in was made out of titanium. Oh. Wait, so... how, can, how can you be allergic to titanium? Titanium is it's like hypoallergenic. It's pretty rare to be allergic to titanium, but I got it. My granddad uh, got his knee replaced, and his replacement knee was made out of titanium, and he rejected uh, rejected that. So it's like a genetic thing. Apparently, I'm. But did you have to get stainless to steel? Something else? Uh, they did like porcelain or something like that. They did a ceramic. Okay. They did, they also replaced it for they free. They didn't use like goat teeth or something <laughs> like Washington. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It, this is it. I didn't get the, my tooth put in like 300 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I I go back. They replace it for free or whatever. I have to do the entire surgery again for uh, them to like remove it and replace well, I mean, it. I mean, they didn't put the wisdom teeth back in. <laughs> but, that's true. They didn't put the wisdom teeth back in. But I did. I did say like I, I would. <laughs> it was like five days later, and they were like, "Oh, you're back." I was like, "Yeah," and they were like, "All right, you need to count to 10. And I was like. One. Um, it was like <laughs> ten, nine, and I was out. I didn't beat my previous record. I lost. <laughs> um, the when the, this time I slept through the whole thing. I didn't wake up with the nurse or anything like that. Didn't even make so, your own leaderboard. No, no, I didn't. And uh, it was a million percent less painful when I got something put in my mouth that I wasn't allergic to. <laughs> mm. So I didn't even need, like, Advil. I was, like, totally recovered by about three days. I never experienced wisdom teeth pain. I took one pill because they just said to, and I never took mm-hmm. another one, and I just never experienced any sort of pain related to the entire ordeal, and it just never came in. But my brother mm-hmm. experienced tons of pain because mm-hmm. uh fucking drugged version of him is an idiot. <laughs> and he was oh, like boy. stretching his jaw and stuff like that after the surgery. Oh, I was like, I'm like, oh, no, his, no. Was, like Did fucking up all his plugs? stitches and stuff. And I'm like, what are you no. doing? No, stop. And like, uh, we're worst. trying to hold his jaw shut, but he's just an idiot. He was just this drunk, stupid, drugged idiot that was useless <laughs> and he was yeah, not listening. You, <laughs> you could run into issues like dry socket and stuff yeah. if the blood doesn't coagulate properly and heal over. Oh. Uh. This was the weirdest video game podcast we've ever done. <laughs> so, 
I don't, ah. you know, we could just end the podcast here. Bad we, sound. we just did the gross ass outro. Yeah, what? but we also got another thirty minutes. So no, I know. We could we could top it with another thirty minutes of gross ass stories, or I can talk about the smorgasbord of games that I played in the past week. This is a new this is a new everything. experience where birds playing video games, and they're not <laughs> yeah, just the co-op. With, there's not the multi. They're not just the multiplayer games that Wander plays. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I I think I played like five new games in a single week. Jeez, uh, something like that. I played. Um, issues. I, well, I'm looking for a very specific. I'm very picky right now. But anyway, I played. But, um, you, but you're still gonna upload them anyway, and they're just gonna get canceled or something. Uh, that's how I felt about Observer. So I played Observer, and Observer had all the makings of like a great series for me. And then, um, as soon as it got, like, too trippy, I basically found myself unable to say a damn thing. <laughs> I was just, like, I was, like, staring slack-jawed at the screen. Just, just being perplexed? Like, yeah, I was just like, um, alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through the hallway now and look at the next weird-ass thing. Like, it just was not going anywhere, so I eventually just killed it. That was but, the observer um, the story about the cop that is able yes. to shunt people's yeah. brains with his own like neural receptor basically, thing and basically as soon as i got to a mirror i wasn't able to play it anymore and have a good good time with it but holy crap the first like 45 minutes everything leading up to that was gold that is a really cool game there's a lot of polish i just can't make a series out of it my audience um, just didn't give a shit about it. Like, I've had two people... I haven't like, gotten Why? any views either. Nobody likes Observer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually kind of super disappointed because I was like, oh, I want to play more of this. And, like, mm -hmm. so you you couldn't commentate for that that section. That was where I started to shine, but that was episode three for me, and, like, nobody gave yeah. a shit. But, like, so specifically uh, for Amir, he was... Mm -hmm. uh, Keith, are you playing Observer or No. I yes, will be, yeah. but I haven't had oh. a chance to touch it yet. But it's okay, probably so, going to be okay. totally my jam. Yeah, probably. it probably will be. You so, might be able to make it, pull it off. Mild spoilers, probably not a big deal, but you're I'll going just, through a guy. I'm just going to take my headphones out. Okay. All right, that works. Yeah, so I, I don't really know if this is actually going to spoil it for him. But really. so, you know, you're going through Amir's <laughs> mind and he is a prisoner uh, mm -hmm. for quite some time. And as part of it, you know, the shower is a, a consistent theme. And because everything's just been dirty, grimy this entire game, I effectively just kind of snap and I just start yelling unclean over and over <laughs> and over as I'm like charging uh -huh. blindly for the shower, giving no shits about like the meaning or any of this yeah. stuff. And I'm just like, unclean! <laughs> and I'm like sprinting my, into it. My Observer was series amazing. was like much the same way where um, like I, I had the most fun of that game. Um, just like not taking it seriously and like talking to all the neighbors was the funniest experience I've ever done. I didn't, you know, there was there was this one section swinging. where there's this in game video game, right? It's like the spider yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as we launched into that, I I did this bit where I pretended that Daniel was a Let's player. So I just started having him in a cyberpunk voice, like, let's playing the video game inside the game. And no one's going to see it because no one's watching these videos. And I'm so proud of them. But nobody gives a shit about Observer. Now, what's your standards for, like, no one? Like, what, what number threshold is a no one who's um, watching this series? Usually, usually if a series opens and the first video gets about 200 views, then I consider it, like, a, a success. This uh, the first the first one in this series got forty, which is really bad. That's a very low number for what I usually look for when I uh, wanna like when I start a series. Yeah. The second video is already half of that. It's like, oh come on, this this is gold. This is such good videos, but no one cares about the game, so no one's gonna watch it. Really surprised the hell out of me. You want to summon Keith back? Probably. Yeah, I guess so. But yeah, this is it's a game that just there's no audience for it. It's weird. Is it because it wasn't a well advertised game to begin with? No, it, it was wasn't. really only on Steam. This game has absolutely no hype behind it. Um and it doesn't present itself very well. Uh it's very grimy, it's very dark, it's not colorful. 
Um, it's visually polished and incredibly uninteresting to look at. The biggest problem is that there's like two models of people in the entire game. Yeah. Oh. Like wow. I played for like three hours before I saw, or not three hours. I played for an hour before I saw the third model of a human being, and I was like, "Ugh, this is not visually gonna grab anybody." Does and Observer have no horror aspects? Yes, it's a horror game. Was there any combat, or were you just supposed to navigate without? Weapons? I don't know. You were. There might be more combat, but it, the parts that I played, there was no combat. As far as I know, there is no combat in the game. I don't think there hmm. is. The the entire point of it is it's a uh, it's a cerebral experience, which I appreciate. I yeah. I don't like horror games where you're like, well, I do and I don't. I like horror games where you fight stuff, but it has to be the right kind of horror game. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it just ends up being uh, boring. I hate the feeling yeah. of helplessness. <laughs> yeah, you can like, have a lot in this game. I mean, their oh, last no, game was a it. game where you walk around in a mansion and look at weird paintings. Yeah, that was Layers of Fear. Yep. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. I I like the I, I I wish that I wish that the game would have been like a better series for me overall because it had some really good potential, but I had to kill it after four episodes. Uh, uh, how far did you get with the wander? Did you end up healing the series? I, or are you keeping I, strong? I, yeah, I I stopped. I have okay. too many other things to play. Yeah. Uh, and as much as I like, like, the occasional horror game, yeah. I can also I hope pass that, on them. I hope that Keith plays it, because I really want to experience the game, and I'd probably worry, watch audience, Keith play Don't worry, audience, I finish stuff. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch <laughs> Keith play it, but I don't think that I would take the time to actually play it myself at this point. So the sad, amusing part for me is, I decided instead of Cat, uh, in, well, instead of, uh, <laughs> cat Observer, was. I'd picked up cat quest which is good sort of i, cat I just quest or quest of cats it's I like I, it looks like wretcheteer it looks like the exact same game as wretcheteer to me except for the shopkeeper aspects but everything I else looks exactly like wretcheteer i was editing videos or doing something on the side and i was just looking back at wander at one point because just all the cat puns were even too much for me and my <sighs> like Word puns. Her humor Wait, consists cat mostly puns? of bad puns anyway. Yeah, the entire game is a cat pun, more or less. I they go like, wow, am going that's to buy perfect. this game. You <laughs> a catastrophe. Oh, today. no, maybe I'm going to pass. Catastrophe, <laughs> aka the cat pun. Because uh -huh. you noticed it's a mobile port bird? Uh, no, I heard catastrophe and I was like, that is a little too low key for me. As a very uh, low-hanging fruit, as far as puns go. I mean, like, it's the strawberry lot. of low-hanging fruit. Yeah, this... <laughs> there is a muting today. These, fruits are, these fruit are underground. Like, these are that's, potatoes. That was, that's, that's what strawberries are. Are they're they underground? underground? I, no, they're I've not. I've seen wild strawberries. strawberries grow they grow underground. Yeah. I thought strawberries were Keith, root you... fruits. No. no. Keith, do you go outside, ever? I don't farm strawberries. <laughs> you should start. It's fun. Strawberries are delicious. Or, oh yeah, they are in little. Wait. You're right. They are in little bushes. Whoops. Yeah. It's, well, it's nothing on the, good it's like, grows underground except for the humble potato, the carrots, and even those kind of suck. But no, yeah, hey, they are seed fruits, so it was stupid to think that they'd be a, a, an underground. But they are like on the ground, like touching it, like they're like <laughs> the lowest fucking fruit ever. Very true. So I was still right. Yeah. I was just stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what is Cat Quest? It looks like a just a dungeon crawler game it's, with cat puns. Yeah, I mean it's a mobile game. It's just one of the oh. best like mobile ports I've ever played, which kind of caught mm -hmm. me by surprise. With too many cat mm -hmm. puns. Because like I really was expecting it to be just atrocious, and I did it as a one-off yep. on the urging of one of my fans, and then it turned out to actually like not be half bad. It's got like mm -hmm. um. It's got kind of the same appeal as like the old school Zelda Zelda games combat wise, like mm -hmm. you know good positioning and uh, it also has like a dodge roll. So good positioning and rolling means you can more or less just beat beast the entire game. Uh, so I've just been kind of on a personal mission to uh, wreck things as much as possible, and the puns actually kind of keep it fresh despite the fact that you know it's a so objectively <laughs> terrible. Isn't there some weird lore like? There was a cat clan with dragon blood. Oh yeah, no, it's a, the plot oh, is ripped good off of God. Skyrim. It is. <laughs> oh. At what point it does is... this just become the Warriors books? 
Barbie. Yeah. Books? Wait, do they have do they have some weird blood in them too? Well, I just mean like all the warriors books are just cats. That's just this is just those books about cat tribes. Yeah, mm. but this one they actually wear armor and are blacksmiths and guards, and there's a king that's a lion and stuff. So yeah, who speaks? Oh, that makes sense. The king has kind of like a, a street <laughs> dialect, which is really bizarre. Really? What? Yeah, so, so that doesn't make sense. He uses like nothing but He's slang. Got that and lion I'm just like, swagger. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't like that Fallout know, 3 picture I sent you, Bird. <laughs> which I don't one? know how to like react oh, to half uh, the shit that happens in the game. I'm just like, I keep getting caught off I'm guard. Not by like, <laughs> I'm not a furry, Keith. I'm not a furry. I've just been sending bird shit ever since the stupid EDF conversation about furries because I, I have stupid shit I've found. <laughs> one amazing one is like, it's the beginning of Fallout 3 where he, where Liam Neeson's all like, your mother would have been so proud looking down to you as a baby, but instead it's like... Oh, that was Liam Neeson. I always forget that. Yeah, but he's got like gray, like split down the middle anime hair that goes down to your cheeks and stuff like that length anime hair. And then he, his entire head is just, he's just like a fox wolf man thing. Like, it's just a horrifying mod for, for Fallout 3 that replaces the character with furries. And I'm like, here you go. Yeah, he sends it this to me. This is yours now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that you, you, you said, uh, you said I returned observer. And my response was, your mother would have been so proud in the form of that image. <laughs> and it's just a horrible, yeah. horrible picture. <laughs> Yeah, so the other games I've been playing, I played um, Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth, which is, um, it's interesting. I, I it, again, what it's is a game. Because, like, they sent me a key for it, and I'm just like, it's a point-and-click mm. adventure game. It's a point-and-click okay. adventure game, but it's set in the most, like, it's, it's also a historical novel. Hmm. And it's, um. I have posted it in the chat. Incredibly well written. It's very well written. It's so well written that I respect it too much to play it. Because <laughs> I was trying to make fun of it. Okay, it's one thing to make fun of like a medieval fantasy world where it's like, hey, your elves are stupid. It's another thing to make fun of a medieval fantasy world when it's like, hey, you're giving birth in the middle of the woods. Yeah, the, uh, the, yeah. The, the, the game actually opens up with a woman who is clearly super hyper pregnant and is walking through the woods with her family in the snow, trying to get the next village so their dad, the dad, can find a work so they can actually support their family. It's like it's mm -hmm. the least joke joke worthy situation it's, ever. I know it's and it, the writing it's is so, so humble and the characters are so lovable that it's like I can't make fun of this. It's it would too be like, good. <laughs> it'd be like trying to make fun of Banner Saga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can make fun of. I have a. I have a vector for making fun of Banner Saga if we want to talk about that. Sure. Do you have to make well, sure the games you play, or yes. is that just Bird the style does. that? Yes, Bird does it's the only thing nature. people will watch if I do. <laughs> if I if I don't make fun of the games, then people won't watch it. This is a thing I've learned. And Weird that now that I've capitalized on it, my channel is exploding. So <laughs> it's weird that you'd mentioned Banner Saga. So I was literally rearing yeah. up to talk about like how I just I did my, I did my like my first unboxing on the channel basically because mm -hmm. uh, I got my indie box because they uh, they contacted me about sending me a box and I was like I only uh, like if you send it to me I'm just gonna be honest and they called my bluff and they actually sent it to me so I'm like I guess I'll unbox this. And okay. So what they do is they do special editions of indie games, so you can get yeah, a box special edition. For, yeah. They offered me one for uh, Hollow Knight, and then I didn't find the email until like two months later. I'm like, yeah. shit. Oh no! That's, that's that sold out Aww. too. Like it's gone yeah. forever. Uh, they what are. What would it have come with? If I were to judge uh, it based on Hollow cool Knight, stuff. if I were to judge it based on uh, the Banner Saga Collector's Edition, uh, they're not of high quality. Uh. <laughs> so if all you want is a box that has the game a game disc like a drm free actual old school cd rom or, or dvd rom like playable game disc of a vi of a video game you get that and you get a soundtrack so those two things are good that's that they did that part right there it's in a box like a proper xbox one slash ps4 style like like the new squishy the new boxes that are like shorter now than they used to be mm -hmm. uh, but yeah you get a proper video game box so if that's all you want then you get that uh the collector's edition, though, it was like a big old box that was shaped. It looked like a book, like a. It, it was made to look like a tome because in Banner Saga, there's that one Varl that's writing the entire story into his book the entire time. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And so you open it up and you find out that the majority of the box is taken up by plastic casing to make the little figurines sit in place. Uh-huh. And the figurine is a two-part bust. One is a pedestal and one is the actual like statue part of a Varl character that is like the story writer person in the story in the game so it's just a bust of him like no arms like it's like this is one of those busts where like it's even the arms are like chopped off so it's just like a head and sort of a torso yeah but it's uh-huh. like it's like spongy rubbery like squeak toy material yeah and the two it's fit the together off. the two fit, fit together via like an o-ring like like lock thing where what you have is to, like, there, like a plumbing fixture like well, like Jeez. that thing where like one of them has like a plug and the other one has a hole and you have to fit them together but like they're uh-huh. so squishy and rubbery that like I I passed it among my I passed it between all of my roommates one by one to see if any of them could get them to stick together and no one could because <laughs> like mm. you, literally like it you try to push them together and they both give so neither of them will latch around the other one because the whole thing's just bending and flexing when you're trying to put it on but mm-hmm. like the figurine itself kind of just looks bad it's rubbery mm-hmm. and cheap and you can see all the brush strokes of like the hastily done like let's paint the texture on this figurine stuff that was done in some factory somewhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. The figurine, the, the base of the thing is supposed to have like the intricate drawings that go on the giant stones you see everywhere in Banner Saga, but it's like really Mm -hmm. smeary and like, it looks like somebody like tried to make something in Play-Doh and then like used a little, like, like they used like a paper clip to like carve etchings into it. And then it got smeared because someone squeezed it a little bit. Like, that's what it looks like, is, like, the etchings are kind of fading away and losing detail already. And, like, it's just a, it's like a, it 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 really just seems like a, it would be like a dog chew toy if it wasn't probably toxic for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, really, the as far as I can, like, so, like, as a collector's edition, this seems like a pretty pitiful offering. As a, if, as a boxed copy of a non-DRM thing, it's like, that's kind of cool, I guess. But then you have to deal with the fact that, like... Like, they, they were going to send Wander a Hollow Knight one, right? The Hollow Knight one, uh, I looked at their Reddit, and people were complaining because the Hollow Knight got a major update after that was sent out. So, like, this, per, like the problem with going back to physical media for any reason other than just collectors, like, if okay. you're planning on actually playing it, you're, you're playing, a like, a, a fixed-in-time version of the game. So, like, when all this new oh. stuff comes out, you don't get any of it. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Because you're playing a disc version. They send you a Steam version, but that just shows how backwards this entire system is, is that the uh, if you buy a, ga- the, a game via IndieBox, it comes with a Steam code, which is probably what you'll actually use instead of any of the stuff in the box. Otherwise, you're like, look, I have a disc with a soundtrack, and I have a manual. Isn't that, isn't that like novel? I have a manual for a, a, a digital video game. And that's like... At best, I, that, at, at best, all I can come up with for a value of this thing would just be that, like, it comes with a manual and a soundtrack. <laughs> wow! But, but they're kind of expensive. I mean, I, there's, yeah. I think, there's better vectors to get to acquire these things. So, like, it only really has mm-hmm. value for like people to just have a lot of money and they just want to ha- fill their shelf space with indie games. But just the general concept mm-hmm. of indie games, because it's, it's like a loot crate thing where you have to subscribe to it. Like you subscribe to it and then you just get some indie game that they chose for that month that you had no part in and didn't necessarily know about in advance unless you're checking their website constantly and but even then you'd have to like unsubscribe every month they don't have something you want and resubscribe over and over again because like it's such Mm a it's something that begs to be a storefront as opposed to a subscription service but they can't be a but it can't be a storefront because they're almost they're almost certainly using that strategy that that t-shirt printers do where they do a run of something limited yeah yeah. like it sucks yeah so that's why it's not a Mm -hmm. storefront but instead is a subscription service because they just do a limited time run and they make an amount Mm -hmm. based on how many people are subscribed and then they they sell the overstock at, at increased prices in their store but that stuff's even more expensive yeah like I can stick anyway, up. so see. other games that I played this last week, because there's still more. Yeah. <laughs> I also uh, fired up a series of an old old favorite of mine that is something I thought, like, I, I wanted to wait for the right, right time to play it. But I'm playing, I started a series on uh, Charles Barkley, Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, if you... I watched any, you I play that for about 30 seconds and the standout thing was that your child was talking to you and they morphed into a different character so they could animate. Yes. So, if you don't know, it's a parody of Final Fantasy games and the entire uh, premise is that it takes place in 
um of the post apocalyptic world uh where uh basketball is outlawed and you have to play as uh Charles Barkley on a path of redemption after he <laughs> caused the apocalypse to happen during the space jam. And it's oh. in the Final Fantasy game. Come and, on and jam. Uh, it's it's really really awesome. It's such a good game. It's so funny. And it has not aged well because the technical problems that went into making it work were astounding to me. But it's also like a nine-year-old game maker game, so I guess I should have seen that coming. So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up all the games that I've played. Um, you just have to kind of watch a little bit of Charles Barkley to understand what makes it so great. But by premise alone, it's like this is, sounds like a, a, a bizarre choice. That somebody would come up. And it sounds like Charles, something that somebody would come up with when they're in the middle of like a fever dream. Is <laughs> Charles Barkley Charles Barkley a real individual? Yes, Charles. All the all of the characters in the game are <laughs> '90s basketball stars. Oh. So Charles Barkley is the main character. the 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 main uh, nemesis of the game is Michael Jordan, and oh. uh, you. Uh, you have to go on a quest with LeBron's James, uh, his, his great, great <laughs> grandson, no LeBron's James, his LeBron. great, great grandson to like redeem Charles Barkley for the sin that he committed when he, uh, caused the apocalypse by slam dunking too hard. <laughs> I uh, am not making up a single detail of anything I just said, by the way. Yeah. It's 100% a factual description of the plot. I wonder how many other I games featured, like, actors or sports stars that were just... None of them. ...blown out of proportion. None of them in this manner. I don't <laughs> think the only you can sell... That. Yeah, like, I don't think they can sell Jack Charles Fu? Barkley's... Oh, well... well mm -hmm. That was, like, a product tie-in, where the product yeah. was just Shaq. Yeah, yeah, but he's still like, I think he is a post-apocalyptic warrior in that game. Oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Also, they made it. A, they also made Shaq Fu a Legend of Reborn, which is that's amazing. That that's a <laughs> real what the hell thing. Is this they made a sequel to Shaq Fu. Yeah, it's coming out for the Switch. What? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I want to like, play that. Like in Shaq Fu, you play as Shaquille O'Neal and fight demons in the post-apocalypse and stuff like that. Huh? So like. Oh, okay. It's basically like that. People then. have made people official products one... that are like this. People are saying there's one for 50 Cent. Yeah, but well, 50, well, 50, yeah, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand. Blood on the Sand is an amazing entry. Yeah. Because that was supposed to be like, it, the entire thing is like a grudge match over like some dude stealing like a diamond you liked or something like that. Like, it's just like... What? Oh, the promo art for Shaq Fu, a legend reborn. <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I need to buy a switch. <laughs> oh Holy my shit! That's actually like really cool looking. So it's Shaq. It, it looks like they hired the Street Fu? Fighter guys to like just. It looks a lot so, like Street Fighter Four. It it looks a lot like Holy Street Fighter Four. Yeah, man, this game Gosh, looks really good. <laughs> his proportions are the best part of it. I. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should do like a <gasps> Holy race. Shit. Yeah, we should do. We, that would be great. There, there has Did to be video his, games made out there. That'll for work the out Rock, just as right? well as our previous attempt at a uh, Sonic Adventure race. Yeah, well, that was a bit terrible, terrible mistake. Look at yeah, Shaquille well, O'Neal's trapezius muscles. Well, the game oh. was supposed to be bad. We didn't, but we didn't anticipate uh, Wander's disabilities. <laughs> Oh, that's right. He wasn't every, able to like every make video it to the game we play level. has to go through the wander check of whether or not he can biologically handle playing it. Yeah, I got that's so right. sick playing that. It was awful. Yeah. Wait, we, we, we played one level and he was already he gets, sick, he gets nauseated so, really easily. Yeah, um, Sonic Adventure DX on the PC. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but the combination mm -hmm. of all of its technical horrors mm -hmm. more yeah. or less made it completely barftastic. I'm yep. trying to think of if, if I've ever encountered a game that made me feel sick. Never. I I know that they always have those warnings, right. especially on the old discs, about, you know, 
be wary that you know you can experience seizures playing these. And this was on well, that's like not Night's that. the Old Republic. That's, that, that, that's, and I'm going. That comes down to whether or not you're epileptic. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's just people who can't watch flashing lights ever, mm. forever. Period. That. Which is why video games often don't do those anymore, but a lot of YouTubers never got the uh, hint because a lot of YouTubers, will, uh, for their jokes, will have like a flashing light on their whole screen. I'm like, why though? Yeah, that's so mean. I'll never do like that. Also, Shaq Fu Legend Reborn is be being developed by a company called Big D's. <laughs> oh, my God. B I G D E E Z. Actually, it was really hilarious when we were playing Guild Wars 2 the other night and doing some personal story stuff and. Wander had turned tremors off, like for camera shake, but I think the, the, movie. the screens wigged out when we were having like oh. mini tremors, and I'm like, I've never experienced this before in this game. <laughs> this is weird. Like the camera was just all over the place. China, mother to a thousand heroes, but prophecy tells of one Chinese warrior that outshines all others. An orphan boy raised by a peasant, <laughs> trained by a master. He will fight powerful adversaries all over the planet and eventually save I, the whole friggin' ooh, world. Boy. What? <laughs> is, oh my god. Is the backstory god. for Shaquille O'Neal's game. <laughs> I've, oh, I've never wanted to play a new game more than I want to play Shaq. <laughs> that is hilarious. Sequel. Chinese warrior Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 man. He's, he's the last Kung Fu Mirai. <laughs> Kung Fu Mirai. Wait, what? That's not even a... I'm making that, fun of the white guy to... from sh being the star of uh, Last Samurai. Oh, my God. Like, the God. Last Samurai oh. starring Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> it's like, wait, oh. what? Well, their whole story with that was that he was one of the American soldiers that was trying to bring industrialization. Well, he, he's a, isn't he supposed to be the same guy from... Isn't he supposed to be the same character that Neo is based on? Or Nio? That, the video game. Uh, yeah, w yeah. William Mann. <laughs> William yeah. Mann. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Except... Wait. Your William was like back in the like, way Man. before the 1800s, right? So that wouldn't have been right because they had guns I didn't read too far into any of like these things. Post yes. William Adams. War. Oh man. So, uh, do you guys mind a topic change? What? Uh, sure. This will probably the be Bioware the last came out to today about. saying they're going to uh, they're they're not going to be developing Mass Effect Andromeda anymore. No more fixes. No more patches. No DLC. No nothing. They're just done hot dropping it. it. They're, they're just hot dropping it. Yep. It's probably for the best. Yeah. Probably, but they like, probably shouldn't uh, make sequels either. I, I was I was reading the uh, I was reading the press release and then the, you know the discussions about it and people were like laundry listing just major game breaking bugs and plot holes that <laughs> yep. I never even heard of and I was just like yep. they really just didn't finish that game no um and my so favorite part is if you're nice to Jol even once in the entire game he just try he takes you to his family home and then straight to his bedroom and tries to fuck you huh. <laughs> and he's bisexual now so it'll happen to every player and it's like this is really awkward cuz I did not come on to you and this is happening and I'm like what <laughs> Like but, there, I did not progress a, a, any sort of loyal uh, uh, romance like series of conversations, but here we for are. Me, I, for me, I guess I, I bring this up because uh, I, I, most recently, uh, No Man's Sky updated again, and we were you know big on talking about that, and I'm actually like feeling pretty positive about that because they're you know actually still developing in the game and making it better, and it's just fascinating watching like. Mass Effect, which was kind of unassailable for years, mm -hmm. uh, as like the bastions of like you know the pinnacles of gaming. Uh, it's a and franchise stuff like where that. literally every sequel was heavily criticized, and the original game was heavily criticized. It's just yeah, now they like, made an objectively bad product. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like you know, everybody was super hyped for this, and it comes out, and it's just like, well, this is just a turd. And for both of them, and I'm just watching No Man's Sky slowly like peter onwards, and I'm like, I will be right someday. It makes me wonder how Anthem's going to turn out. I don't think you out. will, though. It's, I mean, it's better. Yeah, I mean, you you like the original No Man's Sky too, though. I liked it because I you could already just shut liked off. it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You also you you also have a constant <laughs> defense of games of being like it's a game I literally don't pay attention to. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I mean, sure. 
it's up there know. with like it's better with friends i'm like yeah all games are well, <laughs> there are some games that like absolutely should be played with friends though like take edf for example it's fun on its own but like if it weren't oh, for you God. guys i probably would have never played that much getting yeah, down really and stuff like that in edf own, is opinion. miserable <laughs> Well, part of it is playing solo uh, cranks the difficulty down. Like, so when we're playing EDF together, all the monster, all the, uh, all the, I guess monsters, yeah, sure, why not? Everything we're fighting mm -hmm. has like three times as much health right. and more damage. Whereas yeah. if you're playing solo, there's no level limit on your weapons. There's no armor limit and everything has lower HP. So you can more or less just burn through things real quick. The problem is just that EDF has, like, straight-up Left 4 Dead mechanics for co-op. And if you yeah. play it solo, it's like, oh, I guess I have to get out of this. And that's yeah. just less fun than, like, somebody shoot this web down, I'm fucked, and stuff like that. <laughs> and then we immediately just turn the co-op missiles on Bird. Because <laughs> yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. Womp womp. Mm. Yeah, Mass Effect, oh boy. Yeah, you're right, like, though. The, every single entry has been pretty well criticized. At yeah. Mass Effect, like... I did not hear anything about, but praise for 2, and that pissed me yeah, off because I didn't Mass like two. 2. I so, think about, like, just the so, spirit of the game, like, Mass helps Effect it carry on, despite it's the fact that, in retrospect, if you look at it, like, ah, oh, it's so flawed. Mass so, Effect 2 was the game... About it. Mass Effect 2 was the game that got constantly praised by outsiders. But everyone yeah. who played, mm. but a huge chunk of the people that played the Mass Effect series already before that game mm -hmm. were like, this game is fucking up everything about Mass Effect. And the people yep. who uh, were coming in from the outside, it was like, oh yeah, this game's great. And you go, yeah, play Mass Effect 2 and 3, just skip the first one. I'm like, uh, fuck you. <laughs> that's my favorite. To be that's fair, like Mass Effect favorite. 2 had an amazing ad campaign behind it. But Mass Effect 1 it is like, my, it's like one of my well. favorite games of all time. And I'm like, everyone's like, yeah, just skip that one. Just start with 2. I'm like, no. No, <laughs> that's not okay. But it, the best case scenario for Mass Effect, because I know EA is going to make more of it sooner or later, they're going to revive it. The best case scenario is that they just don't make a sequel to Andromeda and we can just pretend <laughs> it never happened. Because it's literally a different <laughs> universe. We never have oh, yeah. to acknowledge it ever too. again. Because Andromeda 2 would be a disaster because there's nothing to build on. There's nothing to build on. The story went... I finished the game. The story went nowhere. Like, there's no interesting ideas really posed by it. The villain is literally just... The Reapers again. They're just, they're just another... They're just another alien race that takes genetic material from its foes and destroys them so that it can improve itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how the fuck did you go to a different universe and make the same story again? That was mm -hmm. That defeats the entire point of even bothering to do that. It's like how it's like how uh, like I, I, had a, I had a huge rant in Andromeda during an episode at one point because I encountered a mushroom and I scanned it and the description told me how much it's totally not a mushroom and I'm like, this is the this is this is what the entire game did. This is a metaphor, a microcosm <laughs> of the entire game is doing the same crap from the last game all the way down to the plot points, but shittier and more boring and more derivative and more uninspired and more badly paced and spread out but calling it different and new. No one can shut up about how it's a brave new world and everything's so different, but not only is it just the same races as before, plus one, but also all the races are more boring and the same because the game has Salarians, Turians, Krogans, and humans, but what it really means is it has humans and Krogans because the Salarians <laughs> and Asari and Turians are just humans now that look different. They don't behave any differently. No one even acknowledges that Salarians only live for 40 years. That's just not even a topic of conversation. Like, Nasari don't have any weird mind-melding things going on. Like, they don't even acknowledge it. It's like as if Vulcans... It'd be like as if you watch Star Trek and Vulcans and Klingons were completely indistinct from humans. Which, if you're talking about, like, race relations in real life, like, that's an ideal situation. But for a fictional universe, it's boring as shit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's like, so all the game did was copy paste the old game and be more boring at it and then keep calling it and, and relentlessly call it new over and over again. It's so, it's just distressing. I think it ties back into the whole no one really wanting to take risks anymore. They figure that it's a safe bet just to try to rehash what they already have established as successful. Risks are scary. Like, and... I, I kind of understand it, but... Yep. It's not even just that, it's that EA is a terrible, terrible company, and they're directly responsible for this nightmare in a way that isn't usually entirely true. 
like people love to blame publishers for what goes wrong in development all the time and for and it's often not really true but in this case it more or less is because they mandated a sequel that nobody wanted to make put a company mm-hmm. on made a sub company and ma- designed them to be the ones to do it they weren't prepared for doing it they made them they made them force them via mandate to make the game in an engine not made for rpgs in the first place and then when mm. the company and then when the project kept falling apart they just kept forcing it to continue instead of canceling it when they should have years ago and they kept just throwing more resources at it and keep and keep giving it deadlines and then eventually just had to ha- come come out so at some point you're so focused on just making a game that runs at all and even plays that you're just you're slashing every ambition you ever had about the project. You're removing all the features from it, and at some point you're like, "Oh shit, we need a story," <laughs> and so you just hastily construct a universe and story later in the development because you you it has to have one. It's an RPG, but like you've been working so long and making the game even run that like it's and the whole thing's a disaster. Like it's just going to be boring. And so it, 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 it stinks of every yeah. single publisher mandated sequel we've had where like Gears of War 4 was like, we're not going to have everything's different now. Marcus already defeated the Locust. It's all over now. But then midway through the campaign, because the robots are so boring that you're fighting, they give up and bring back the Locust and Marcus. And like everybody knows like Gears, uh, Halo had like the most famous Halo has one of the best sets of enemies ever designed for a shooter. Like, they're iconic, and they're perfect. And then they made a fourth game after the whole War of the Covenant was over, and they're like, uh, robot monsters? And it's the most boring game ever, because they had because they were required to make a sequel under a deadline without having ideas of what how to fill it out. And there's the same thing again. Like, they just, they like, make a sequel to this thing. You have no time to actually, like, dream about what it should be. And so it's just going to be a game that doesn't consist of dreams. It consists of checklists. And again, stuff that had to be made so that a, a product could be shipped at a deadline. And it's just, boy, oh boy, that's not how science fiction should live. Mm-mm. Yeah, because you're trying to like pioneer new concepts and such. And having a new IP, I think, would be more beneficial and working around that than trying to expand upon one where that's the problem I mean, though they can't sour. make a new ip because they don't have ideas like yeah. the sequel didn't happen be- like that's the problem is video games are supposed to happen when somebody has an idea either a story or a series of or mechanics mechanic. they want to expand on and that's going to be the point of making a sequel but that's not how this happens what happens is basically the publisher commissions a sequel by this date mm. here's your time limit here's the resources make it happen and, and so if make you don't have happen. ideas too yeah. bad you still have to mm-hmm. make the game based on no ideas and that's how you that's get these how... incredibly garbage <laughs> ga- products that shouldn't exist that's how work for hire works you uh like, you halo 4 monkey. was so boring <laughs> it was the first halo game i haven't even beaten because <laughs> i was like i can't i've, Wait, I've loved every game so halo far 4? and i can't so, there's a halo 5 yeah. oh Mm-hmm. Uh. Halo, Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, Reach, <laughs> 4, 5. And I played all the way up until the first two missions of, of 4, and I'm like, I can't. This isn't Halo anymore. It's just some really boring government, like, I almost said government mandate, uh, publisher <laughs> mandate product that just <laughs> shouldn't exist. No, government, wait, wait. Mandate. <laughs> government mandate. Government mandate. The United, United States game. orders more Halo. Now, you will make a this... video game to the glory of America. <laughs> I don't know why it's German, <laughs> but there you go. Now, let me get this straight. Like, to whom are all, like, the funds and the money going to? Is it the publisher and then they redistribute it to the company that makes it? Because I don't see why a company would just want to break away hmm. from a publisher, create a game that they want to make, and then find one that, sure, like, they might not have the clout that EA does. So publishers absorb the risk, more or less. Right. Mm. Like, right now... Uh, Eidos Montreal, I think is the name of the company, are the people that make Hitman. And they made Hitman, uh, this season pass Hitman that came out under the umbrella of Square Enix. Now mm-hmm. they're making the next Hitman on their own because they were basically fired from Square Enix for the last one not going well. It Now they have a specific budget that that is their own money and so on and like they if they don't make a game that is properly successful, they don't have a company anymore and they have right. to just fire everybody. So that's why uh, that's why Work companies want exists. publishers yeah. generally is that, and that's why like 
that's why you see uh double fine keeps kickstarting like every project they make and and the people that make uh uh necropolis and shadow run games like they kickstart every single game they make because they, they're trying to set bankrupt. it up so they preemptively <laughs> have the money because if they don't preemptively yes. have the money then if the game doesn't do well they just spent two years working on a game that makes their company go bankrupt and then everyone loses their jobs Yep. yep, that is how it works. Okay, well, should we end this? Because apparently my setup is falling apart over here. Oh, That's okay. fine. Yeah, I got to put the on because apparently my audio is destroying itself. Hooray! Yeah, tips for a brand new game designer. Start small. There you go, there's the oh, answer. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, do not... If you don't know how to make a game successful, do not just make your own project and put all your money into it. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. start boy, small. Boy, oh boy. St- Either start work on some... Start- you need to work on something that'll basically be free. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah, make it a tiny project that'll basically be free, and you don't need it to succeed for your cellular life to continue. And then try to use those as resumes to get hired by a company that can actually let you work in a situation right. where you aren't risking your ass every minute. And then when you have like yeah. 10 years of experience, you can do this crazy shit where people just break free. I'm like, I'm going to make red barrels. We're just going to make outlast. We don't have any resources. Fuck it. And they nailed it because <laughs> they and they nailed it because they knew how. Yep. Like, all of today's right. successful indie ga- game companies are almost exclusively companies that already knew how to make successful games beforehand via their experience in the AAA industry. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're at the end of the podcast. We're talking about something serious. Who has a gross story? Oh, I got one. Yay! Um, we, so my mother was in town visiting. And, um, and so... My mother likes hiking, so I took her out on a on a nature trail thing. Oh, I know what you're gonna say. And so I'd say halfway through, well, we, we come across sh- flowers sh- and bugs sh- everywhere. <laughs> we don't need to hear the details apart this. We Listen, find Shell doesn't like turd. other people finishing stories. She's going to tell you guys about every every flower and tree <laughs> we found. But so Just we find a a giant wet turd in the middle of the path, laugh. and there are butterflies all about it, all over it. And uh-huh. it was fascinating because I didn't know butterflies really go for shit, but they did. <laughs> and so we mm. walk up on the uh, we walk up on them and effectively cloud of butterflies. It would have been pretty if they weren't, you know, standing in shit seconds before. And then they start landing on us, and then we have little, oh little no shitty butterfly <laughs> footprints all over. But, but, but then the turd was moving. Yeah, they're also they're also dung beetles. And I'd they were starting to roll little before. balls out of it. <laughs> shitty butterflies. Yeah. Well, yeah. and the one butterfly, it wouldn't get off my hand. Oh, yeah, she was, and it was being like, nibbled on by a butterfly. Like, the butterfly proboscises, when they're, like, dabbing it all over your skin, just feels like a, like a clammy, wet needle or something. But they're not needling you. They're just sort of, like, lightly tapping you. All and right. then I had to run away from them because they wouldn't stop landing on me. I guess I got what I expected. <laughs> And ask and you shall receive type of thing. Also, I was listening <laughs> to this entire story while watching the video you sent me, Bird, so this has been a very weird few minutes. <laughs> hey, somebody told me to send you that. You sent me Furry Force from Call of Humor. Somebody furry told me force? to send you that as a uh, revenge for all the furry stuff you've been sending me. Anyway, this arms race can only end poorly for us. If you have any questions for four nerds... Oh, we didn't do any um, questions. Whoops. We haven't done any questions for like three podcasts, oh, so... It's too late. My, my setup yeah. has been breaking for the past ten minutes. I'm like trying to steer us towards an end. Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, um, if you have questions, send them to fournerds at gmail.com and uh, we'll probably read them eventually. We should yeah. probably catch up on our backlog. I'm sure we have a ton of questions now. We'll probably just have another Q&A episode at some point where we just burn through them again. Yay. It worked out well. But yeah. Um, cool. Oh so no. Thanks for watching, everybody. The Megazord. What? <laughs>